All right, looks like we are live. I want to welcome everybody to Standing for Truth. My name is Donnie B, and I am your host and moderator for tonight's debate on evolution. This is a continuation in the prolific evolution debate challenge series, and it is a privilege to have Ryan Adler and Dr. Dino with me here tonight to debate this important topic. To be specific, tonight, evolution is on trial. This is uh, the second debate of three this week on this topic. Last night, we had Jackson Rowe and uh, Kent debating uh, dinosaurs and birds. Tonight, evolution is on trial. And then on Friday, we got Mark Reed here who will be debating Kent on, is there reasonable evidence for biological evolution? Now, before we get into the debate and the fun, Ryan Adler, I want to thank you so much for giving us your time for this debate, being willing to engage in this important topic. Let's start with uh, some brief introductions. Uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your channel. Well, um, to start off, I am absolutely in no way an expert in evolution or any scientific field. Didn't go to school for it. I did go to school for psychology for a bit, but that didn't work out due to personal issues uh, with you know sick relatives and stuff. Not important. Other than that, I just a pretty normal dude, I guess. I climb cell towers for a living. Have a three-year-old fiance um, from Ohio. My channel. I like to mostly try to cover what I consider, or in my opinion, is misinformation. Other times, it's just random video game let's plays and pretty much just whatever I want. You know, I, I don't really have a specific idea for where the channel is going. But the when I started it, or when I really wanted to take it seriously, is when I seen the debate between Kent and Professor Dave, and that one, that that one really. I don't know something about it. It just it, you, there, at that time there was so much misinformation going around about obviously other topics and stuff that I'm not going to get into. But I don't know. Something just set it off, and I wanted to start covering it. And I started with flat Earth stuff, and then moved on to some other stuff, and eventually worked my way up to Mister Definitely Not a Doctor Kent Hoven. Okay, here we go. Looks like shots fired already. We'll hand it over to just a little, uh, just a tiny bit. Kent, good to have you. Uh, how you doing? A little bit about yourself. A little bit about Dow. Uh, my name is Kent Hoven. I have three doctor's degrees and one honorary, whether you like it or not. Okay, they're not from accredited schools because I don't believe you came from a rock. So you can call me what you want. That's fine, Ryan. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've been a Baptist preacher forty-eight years. Taught high school science and math for fifteen years. I believe the Bible is absolutely true. We have, I'm sitting in Genesis Baptist Church in Lenox, Alabama, and we have uh, all kinds of fun stuff to do here. We believe in science. You know, there are laws in the universe, like the law of gravity. I got a short clip I want to play that's just uh, incredible. The guy that did this blew my mind. Where do laws come from? Laws come from proven evidence over time that... Well, the laws themselves, where do they come from? Where do the, where do the laws of nature come from? Laws in nature come from men who have definitively done the same experiments with the scientific method. And no, no, no. I, I don't mean us discovering the laws of nature. The laws themselves, the force of gravity, electromagnetism, the strong and weak nuclear forces. Why are they there and why are they so persistent and consistent? I don't know. Well, see, I'm saying that's the product of a mind. Laws come from lawgivers. And the reason why the laws of nature are so consistent and precise is because this universe was put together and fine-tuned and sustained by a mind. And that's why we can do science. We can't do science if the laws of nature changed every 10 minutes. That's true. So I'm saying to get behind all this, there's a mind behind the universe. And that's why science makes sense. Amen. Science makes no sense. The evolution certainly makes no sense. There is no scientific evidence for evolution whatsoever. It's the dumbest religion in the history of the universe. That's my humble opinion. We'll defend that position tonight. Go ahead, Ryan. Okay, thank you, Kent. And also thank you, Ryan, for the introductions from the both of you. So for the audience sake, we are going to do uh, what we typically have been doing, keeping it uh, you know, engaging, free-flowing, and organic between the debaters. We will have, let's say, between eight and 10 minute opening arguments just to kind of, you know, set the foundation for what we are going to be discussing tonight. 
we will allow uh, Ryan to kick us off with that. Whatever's not used, of course, we'll just throw into the discussion portion. And once we hit the hour mark, we are going to uh, jump into some audience questions. So typically for these evolution debates, we get uh, you know a large audience with a lot of questions. So uh, it's nice having 20 to 30 minutes to engage those questions. So to the audience, make sure you're tagging me with your questions at Standing for Truth or at Donnie, and that way I won't miss them. Okay, with that out of the way, let's hand it over to Ryan. Ryan, whenever you're ready, we'll give you eight to 10 minutes. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I thought a lot about this and I actually spent hours, well, technically days, hours across a few days, bringing this whole presentation together, you know, PowerPoint and trying to find all these facts and study everything I possibly could about evolution. And in turn, also watching a lot of Mr. Hoban's debates. And, and I realized that he, he quite frankly doesn't care about science. He clearly doesn't either doesn't understand it or just refuses to believe it. I don't know. Um, so instead, I, I just I wanted to touch more on why I guess I'm doing this. It's not it's not that you just don't believe in evolution. It's what that means. Essentially, think of it as you like analogies. So think of it as a brick house. And each brick is a different field or study of science. The whole house is science in general. You, once you crumble that evolution part, and especially when you add in your young earth part, it's like th throwing a wrecking ball through the entire thing. And you have to deny so many different fields of science, astronomy and medicine and a lot more than that. And it just, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to the future generations that are going, that could have grown up to go and study and come up with this, you know, great new discovery. And now they might not because they've been indoctrinated to believe the world is only 6,000 years old and evolution isn't real and they shouldn't trust science in essentially is what's going to happen and not only is that dangerous i just think it's disgusting and along with the religion part too you it, a lot of religious people are scientists a lot of them and they still believe the earth is four and a half billion years old and believe that animals and plants and life in general evolves Every, and that is because everything evolves, not just life. I mean, ideas, language, technology. It, evolution is not just connected to life. It's to everything. And to say life doesn't evolve, I mean, for one, the main reason it doesn't make sense is let's, let's go with what you say. Let's say 4,300 years ago, there was this big flood. And once that ship crashed upon that mountain... All the life came down, somehow not leaving a fossil trail along the way, but whatever, we'll ignore that. Then they evolved into all the species we have today, all the different kinds, if you will. And that means that essentially every day from that point till now, we would have had to have around 10 to 15 new species or kinds every single day. It would be a, a huge thing. I mean, we would, it, it would, it would be so normalized too. We would just be talking about, oh, look at all these new species we found today. And we don't because that evolution didn't just take place in 4,300 years. Uh, it took place over millions and billions of years, but obviously you don't believe that. So you believe in evolution regardless of whether you claim to or not. You just believe in a very accelerated version of it. And it just, I don't know. It To me, the logic doesn't make sense. To me, if there is a creator or designer, if you will, it makes far more sense that at one point he, she, it just went and kickstarted the universe and let the laws of the universe decide everything that has happened today. I mean, even in if you take the Bible literally, okay, there's one passage or in Genesis it says. I think on the third day, and I could be wrong, obviously not a theologian, not a Bible expert, but it's essentially something like 
then the earth, you know, came forth and created plants and after their kinds and all that stuff. And then after that is when the space and the heavens were created, which that doesn't work. I mean, in astronomy, for example, there are stars that are galaxies that are farther than 6,000 light years away. So they're farther than you claim the earth is, is old. And it just, we wouldn't be able to see that light if the earth was only this old. There's trees older than that. And I know I don't mean to keep harping on the age of the earth. I know this is about evolution. But the only reason evolution doesn't work for you is because you don't have the time scale to make it work because of your belief in a young earth. And I don't know. I just know that the majority of the people in the world believe in evolution, not just scientists, religious people as well. The majority of religious people don't take the Bible literally. It's interpreted and they still believe the world is this old because it is you can't deny radiometric dating you can't deny the fossil records i know you will and you'll claim you know oh this fossil you can't prove that it had an offspring or whatever and that's obviously i don't need to explain why that's dumb but it is because clearly one fossil doesn't represent the entirety of the population but it still gives you a glimpse into how that particular creature evolved, especially when you find another fossil later on with just a slight difference and then another slight difference. And then, yeah, but again, that doesn't work with your view of this old earth. <sighs> Anyways, I know I'm rambling and my time's basically almost up. I have a few minutes, but whatever. I don't want to take up too much time. I want to get in the free flowing conversation. I do just want to say to end this, um, I appreciate you taking the time to debate and inviting me here. I, if I come off as snarky or just a jerk, I mean, quite frankly, I am, but I do still, I, I still appreciate being here. I respect what you do, even if I think it's completely wrong and ridiculous. I mean, at the end of the day, you're doing it to make money. Nothing wrong with that. I get it. We all got to make a living. So yes, thank you for allowing me to be here and I'll let you go now so we can move into the free flow conversation of things. Okay, Ryan, thank you so much. Let me stop the uh, timer. And I do want to remind the audience, make sure you're tagging me with your questions. I've already got a few saved, so thank you very much. Uh, Kent, we're going to hand it to you, let's say up to 10 minutes. And then whatever's not used, or I should say right after that, we'll just get into the free flowing discussion. So Kent, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay, well, thank you so much. And Ryan, I thank you for doing this also. Um, and I, I can handle the snarky, no problem. I do it regularly. No, I enjoy it, actually. So let's see, you brought about 40 different points. I'll try to cover most of them. Uh, first of all, I was going to go back and get uh, a heater because we don't have our heater in the building yet. And I thought, I'm going to get thermal underwear because thermal underwear with a Hawaiian shirt is kind of a you know, contradiction of terms like jumbo shrimp and military intelligence and evolutionary science, contradictory term. Evolution has nothing to do with science, nothing. Science is what we can observe. It's knowledge gained by using observations and experiments to describe the, and explain the world around it. Nobody's ever seen a cow produce a non-cow, ever. No, all you guys rely on is long ago and far away. You rely on dead things, bones in the dirt. Make it happen today. It doesn't happen. You imagine that it happened from these fossils you find. And arranging them in some kind of order is ridiculous. Okay, so the scientific method, cows produce cows. Okay, that's a, that's a theory. Okay, so you make an observation. That's all we ever see. Cows make cows. You develop an idea why. Maybe there's something genetic about it. Think of experiments to test it. Uh, let them have more babies. Predict what will happen. I predict the next generation will be cows also. Observe what we see. Wow, it's a cow. Okay. Modify the idea if their predictions are wrong. Nope, they were right. That's all that ever happens. Cows produce cows, so it must be genetic. You can keep breeding them and test it. They've been doing this for years. All the farmers in the world do this, whether it's plants or animals. The babies will be cows, and they're always cows. Seems to work, always. Same thing with apes or anything you want. They, they make these lines on paper connecting the various different chimpanzees and monkeys and apes and humans. This is not science. This is a religious belief. 
Science is the, it comes from the Latin word seer, to know. What do we know? We know cows produce cows. You do not know cows came from an amoeba. And you talk about all the animals coming from uh, animals on Noah's Ark and how many species that would be per, per day or something. Ryan, you believe they all came from rocks, which came from a dot of nothing. And you talk about the speed of light from the stars getting here. Ryan, your religion teaches the universe in a billionth of a billionth and a billionth of a second. The universe was smaller than a proton, and it expanded to 56 billion light years across. Maybe they've in increased the number now. The distance across the universe that they're saying now is way greater than the age they give for the universe. So you got a much worse problem, much worse than stars giving their light to the earth. 17 times the Bible says God stretched out the heavens. So God made the earth first. And you're right, he made the plants, and then he made the sun the next day. Plants can make it with no, one no problem one day with no sunlight. Not a problem at all. But you want to make these plants all come from a, an, a, an amoeba, which came from a dot. Stop and think. I don't understand how you guys can't get it, but okay. Religions attempt to understand and explain the world, but religion is not considered science. Right. Evolution is a religion. It's not science. Science is what we can observe and study and test and demonstrate. It's knowledge gained through study. Instead of looking at a bone in the dirt, claiming that to produce something else, do it in the laboratory. Get an amoeba and turn it into a cow or a whale or anything. Take all the generations you want. Time isn't going to help. Time makes everything degrade. Time is your enemy. You don't realize that you think it's your God. Time can do anything. Give it enough time. It'll work. Time is the enemy because everything falls apart with time. Okay? Science is a system of acquired... Oh, I forgot to start my timer. Brother Donnie just stopped me when it's time. Okay. Science refers to a system of acquiring knowledge, observation, and experimentation. All observation says dogs produce dogs, cows produce cows. Nothing evolves. Nothing. So I want to get to one other thought here. Let's see. Definition of evolution. Evolution. The process by which different kinds of living things are thought to have evolved, or developed, I'm sorry, and diversified from earlier forms during the history of the earth. You can believe whatever you like. Okay? That's a process that they think caused it. We don't observe it. This is why it's not part of science. The gradual development of something, especially from a simple to a more complex, I would say um, the, the cars have evolved from the horse and buggy to the modern you know, Corvette, Jaguar, whatever you want to use. But that was with a lot of intelligent input. Every step of the way, there was some intelligence behind that. And we don't see any animals evolve into anything else. You imagine that it happened, but it's just simply not science. Evolution is a process of gradual change takes place over many generations during which species of animals, plants, or insects slowly change some of their physical characteristics. That's questionable. Are there limits to the changes? Just are there limits? They've got rodeo in Texas where they jump, they ride cows and jump them over fences. I got a video of a cow jumping over a six foot fence. You believe if we gave the cow vitamins and took it to the gym every day and went generation after generation getting the strongest cows, you believe the cow could ever jump over the moon? or jump over Texas. There's a limit how high cows can jump. Is there a limit to how fast humans can run? They've got the 100-yard dash down to, what, nine seconds now or something like that, okay? Do you think they'll ever get it down to one second? Or is there a limit? This is what you guys refuse to understand because you don't understand science. Yes, variations happen, but there's limits. There are 4,000 different species of potatoes now, and they're still potato. 339 recognized breeds of dogs, they're still dog. They got little dogs like the Chihuahua, big dogs like the Great Dane. There's a limit. They're never going to get a dog as big as an elephant or as big as the moon. There's a, you, don't, you guys will not admit the variations are limited and they're always the same kind, just like the Bible said would happen. Same kind. You can look up the definitions of evolution. It is something that is believed. It is never observed. Descent with modification from pre-existing species. All we've ever observed is the descendant is the same as the, as the mom and dad, same kind, recognizable as the same kind. You don't see it change to anything else. And rather than get off on the rabbit trail, you'll try to steer everybody down. What's the definition of a kind? There are 27 different definitions of species in the dictionaries and, and science books that I've got. So exactly as a species. We don't see any animal produce what any four-year-old would say is a different kind. If you think there's some, show it to, show it to me today. Not lines on paper connecting the pictures of them. I want to see the real thing. And not a dead thing from the ground. Not a bone you found in the dirt. I'd like to see it happen. 
You imagine that it happened. Somebody sold you this bill of goods, Ryan, and you fell for it. Yes, you got suckered into believing something dumb. So evolution has six different levels or stages. The atheists hate it when I do this, but you have to have cosmic evolution. Where did time, space, and matter come from? Where did these laws come from? The law of gravity, who made that? What exactly is the law? Give me a jar of gravity and paint it red. What exactly is gravity? What exactly is light? Give me a jar of light. See, there's a lot of things we have laws, the Boyle's law, the uh, laws of inertia. Nobody, where'd the law get? There has to be a lawgiver outside of the universe. God, there has to be a God to create time, space, and matter. You guys want to create time, space, matter from a dot smaller than a proton. How can you possibly believe something so stupid? It's dumb. There's no kind way to say it. And that Big Bang made everything expand faster, way faster than the speed of light. The Big Bang, according to your dumb theory, says this dot of near nothing expanded at incredible speeds to become the whole galaxy we have today. So the, we talk about the first law of thermodynamics, how that it covered that some other time. These laws had to be created. The, let me get to the big chart here. Here's the problem. We observe what we call variations within the kind. But you guys have to have an explanation for cosmic evolution. Where did space come from? Does space have an end? If space ends somewhere, what's on the other side? Where did matter come from? Where did time come from? We're stuck in 2022. You want to go back, you know, 14.772 billion years or 13.772 billion years ago. What was before that? Was there no time? Was time actually created 13.772 billion years ago? Was space created? Was matter created? From where? My Bible answers that in 10 words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven. There's space and the earth, matter. God, outside of time, space, matter, created all three. I can worship a God like that. Then you'd have to have chemical evolution. Your Big Bang. One minute. Your Big Bang made hydrogen and helium and some lithium. How do you get platinum, silver, and gold? Then you have macroevolution, changing from one kind to another. It doesn't happen, Ryan. It just doesn't happen. The Bible says 24 times in the first seven chapters, they'll bring forth after their kind. Cows make cows. Dogs make dogs. Thousand types of bananas. Always make a banana. 60 kinds of eagles. Still make eagles. It just doesn't happen. I've got a long list of, of things you said that I'm going to try to comment on later, but I ran out of time. I just thought I'd tell you about the shirt. You're the one that doesn't understand science, son. I understand it really well. Science is what we know. We observe. We know bananas make bananas. We don't know bananas and cows are related, like your chart shows. Go ahead. Okay, thank you so much there, uh, Kent, for your 10-minute opening statement. Gentlemen, you both got your opening arguments up to 10 minutes. We've got enough points, I think, on the table to keep us busy for the next 45 minutes or so. So what we'll do, uh, Ryan, Ryan Adler, we will... Um, give you the uh, opportunity to, since Kent just ended with his opening, we'll allow you to pick the first topic and uh, ask the first question, however you'd like to proceed. The floor is yours. Go ahead, guys. All right. Absolutely. Um, wow. So I did cover about 40 different topics and you went through about 40 different types of science there. Um, I want to, I want to focus first on, all right. The, you, you so my whole point to what i was or the main point i was trying to make is yes you're correct the big bang is a theory and we don't know if it even happened as carl sagan put it what if the universe was just always here i don't believe that and most people don't either but it, it easily could have been a god or deity or whatever some almighty being that could have started the universe i'm not denying that i don't know but it still makes way more sense that he or it created these laws that you also believe that he it created as a, not only the laws of physics and everything that we see, but evolution as well. Like it makes way more sense that it started at 13 point whatever billion years ago instead of, you know, the 6,000 years ago that you claim happened. That's so that's where I would like to start. Okay, I do believe God created the laws of everything. He created time, space, matter, and he created the law of monophyly. He gave all the creatures the ability to produce a variety of babies, some bigger, some smaller, some more hair, less hair, whatever. 
microevolution is a lousy term, but that's the term they use for it. Variations certainly happen within the same kind. There's no evidence of it ever going outside of what any four-year-old would say, that's the same kind of animal. A dog and a wolf and a coyote are the same kind of animal. They're certainly not an elephant or a giraffe or a woodpecker. So I think it's obvious to anybody with an open mind, it, it's, it's possible to classify animals. Why do we have a classification system? Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Carolus Linnaeus made that up in 1700s. How, how are we able to classify things if evolution is true? It ought to be one continuous stream from amoeba all the way to whales and of something in between, ev recognizable every step. It's not. It is possible to classify animals because they bring forth after their kind. That's all anybody has ever seen. I don't understand how you don't get it, but um, go ahead. So that's so that's what I'm confused on. How do you not get what you just said? That that is how we classify them. Why why is how is a dog and a coyote and a wolf all the same? They're not. They not only are they not the same, they can't interbreed. Uh, so they are different and that's why we classify them that way. And evolution is why they're different. They have evolved differently due to their, you know, climate and their different traits they had that were more desirable to some than others you know there uh, there's not it's not like it's just one simple reason why they evolved natural selection chance all of it it so i don't i don't get why you don't get that that's that's what i'm stuck with you're you just like, like we <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i'll let you answer or go i i agree you're stuck coyotes and dogs can interbreed coyote hybrid dog Dogs, wolves, coyotes are related. Uh, let's see. Oh, brother, I've got the wrong one here. So I've got a whole series of, of evidence from different animals that have been able to interbreed. Coyotes, dogs, wolves can all crossbreed. Okay? They normally don't, but they can. I know this. Coyotes and pine trees can't. Coyotes and hummingbirds can't. No, that, that's, that they can't. So, yes, there are some limits. Have we reached the limit yet? I don't know. But there seem to be limits everywhere we look. There it is, right here. Sorry about that. 9:35. Oh, DV. I get my. I, I have a busy schedule here. 339 recognized breeds of dogs, big ones, little ones. They're still the same kind of animal. It's not a banana. A four-year-old will tell you which one's different, boys and girls. Uh, the banana. And God said they bring forth after their kind. If they're able to bring forth, they're the same kind. Now they might reach the point like a Chihuahua Great Dane, where there are physical problems they can't bring forth. Okay, but they're still, they had a common ancestor. That doesn't prove that the, that the coyote and the dog and the hummingbird had a common ancestor. But you guys make these family trees as if this is some kind of science, and you draw the humans and the birds and the reptiles and the ladybugs and the pine trees going back to a common ancestor. This is not science, Ryan. This is a religious belief. You're welcome to it. And why on earth would God create a dumb theory like evolution for which there's no evidence? My God made it right first time. They didn't have to struggle and survive. He made everything perfect. This man messed it up, but he made a perfect creation. And he's going to make another one here one of these days. I'd like you to join me and live there forever with the Lord. So I'd like to win you over. Go ahead. Well, I mean, once again, you're... So why? So where do all the where does all the life come from? Did did he create it all at once? Did he start with a particular type, or did he start with a single cell? I mean that that's where where did it start? What what was first? Well, he told us very clearly in Genesis he started by making each of the kinds. I don't know. There's a website called barominology.com. Baramin is the Hebrew word for kind. These guys study how many kinds of animals had to be on the ark. I think the current estimate is about 8,000 kinds of animals. From those 8,000, you can develop hundreds of thousands of what we call species. I don't think the animals care whether we classify them in a different species or not. Dog and wolf are different species. They can still interbreed. The animal, we're putting our, our classification on them. They don't care. Turn all the animals loose in the woods. They'll find what's their own kind. The coyotes will show no interest in the oak trees at all, other than to pee on it. All, they want to mate with another coyote. So they'll tell you the kind. Come to our barn, turn the, turn the animals loose. The, uh, the goats show no interest in the rabbits. They want to find another goat. It's so obvious what the same kind is, but you guys want to draw these charts and make a shark related to a fern 
and a starfish and an octopus. Do you think you are related to an octopus, Ryan? Absolutely. I think we're all related, not only because of evolution, but the genetic code within all of life. And, and that's just the life we found here. I mean, the potential of finding life other places in the universe would definitely put a little damper in your uh, theory there. But it's still... Wait, wait, wait. You said you, if, we find life, if we find life somewhere else in the universe, that would put a damper on my theory? Yeah. Yeah. How would it not? Well, first of all, have they found life other, anywhere else in the universe? That's why I said if. Okay. So the answer would be no, they have not. Okay. And the God that I created can do whatever he wants. He made it kind of made, could have made life somewhere else. He gave us a book that says he made it all right here. And Adam is Adam and Eve are the mother of, and father of all humans. So I don't think there is. They've been looking for a long time, spending a whole lot of government money trying to find it. And so far, nothing. So I, I don't think they will. If they did, it wouldn't hurt my theory at all, though. Well, so once again, as I asked just a minute or two ago, where what was first then? Where did it all come from? Like, what did he just boom create all these these different kinds at one point? And if so, Absolutely. why do we not observe that? Why God. why why do we find fossils that are older than others? And why do we find examples of life that only existed in the past but not now? Why do we find life that particular types of life and particular subspecies in certain parts of the world as you know compared to the other how did all of this happen in 4300 years you claim that's a long time but it's not i mean it's just not at all well first of all it's hard to imagine columbus finding this place 500 years ago it was 500 that's not right? imagined that's not hard to imagine what do you mean no, i'm trying to get you to understand 500 he didn't he didn't, he didn't find this place Okay. He, he stumbled upon it. Right. He, he didn't Indians even think said, he was here. Right. The there was Indians people here him before him, and there was people that, that right. found it before him. Right. You're missing the point. Modern uh, Columbus came over to America 500 years ago. That's a long time ago. A long, 500 is a long time. No, Six it's not. Ago. That is not it's a not, long time okay. ago. That, okay. that is, what do you, how is that a long time ago? That we have so. <sighs> Okay, like I said in the beginning, if this came from 4,300 years ago, why do we not? Why have we not been found finding 10 to 15 different kinds of animals every day? And once again, I ask. More importantly, this is what I want you to answer: Where? What was first? It was it all first, or was there an example of a life that was first? Because there has to be something that was first. We we find stuff older than uh, fossils, older than other fossils. Different types of life, older than other different types of life. And I, I, I'm trying not to say species because I know you claim it's a slippery term, like kind isn't somehow. But still, like, one, please. Sorry. Okay. Right. We got about eight topics going. Let's let's just go one at a time. Okay. I believe God created maybe eight or ten or fifteen thousand different kinds of animals, and they have diversified into what we have decided should be called a new species: dog, wolf, okay, but Did he create that at the same time? Yeah, well, in seven, in six days, he created everything. No, everything. it says on it says on day three, I thought day, is when day, life. Day, day three, he made all the plants. Day four, he made the sun, moon, stars. Day five, he made the uh, the fish and some of the birds. So day, uh, okay, okay, wait, stop. How did he make the plants before the sun? Was photosynthesis not a thing back then? Right. No, as I said earlier, plants can make it one day with no sun, no problem. He made the plants before. Okay, the so sun. you're you're so why then what was a day? There was no sun. A day of now is just one revolution of the earth, but why was the earth revolving without the sun? There would have been well, no gravity acting right. upon it. It would have just been standing still. A day is determined by one spin of the earth. Our That's day why I said one revolution of the earth. Like right. one our spin. day starts at midnight, the sun's not even out. Why yes, it is. At... It's out on the other side of the earth. Well but we start our day at midnight. The sun's not out. You're, make, you're, making, you're missing the entire point. God made the plants on day three, according to the Bible. He made the sun on day four. But the bigger picture here is, I'm not asking everybody to pay for my theory and religion to be taught in schools. You are demanding that your dumb religion of evolution be taught to everybody, and they can't get their peer-reviewed articles published unless they bow down to that dumb idea that everything is related, like these charts show. You're the one pushing your You can your get religion. any peer review 
article published. What are you talking about? As long as it has to be peer reviewed, I, what do you mean? You can get anything peer reviewed if you want it to be. You yourself can absolutely have articles peer reviewed. I don't recommend it because it goes against pretty much all of science, but you can. And regardless, as sure. I said, so let's go back to that. He created all the plants on day three. So right. is that is that every plant like that we have now, right. or is it just a few of them? And then, hold, hold on one second. So then 4,300 years ago, all the plants would have died. So you know, or maybe not the ones in the ocean, I suppose, but the ones on land would have died, even though somehow we have trees alive today older than that flood even one that your you just your channel just recently released a video on that you claim was only 4300 years old even though it's closer to 5000 years old cuz it's about 4800 years old i don't know if that was just a miss you know you just mistaken or the person on there i can't remember his name mistaken or if it was a deliberate lie one one topic at a time please okay don't slap and run first of all you missed the whole point of this debate it's evolution on trial not the Bible yeah. on trial. The no, Bible no, no. Well, yeah, I understand that. But okay. you, gotta, you okay. have to understand yeah. that evolution is the main belief. Most I'm just going to jump believe. in real quick, though, and, and Ryan, and, and good discussion. I think there might be a little too many instances of, of sentences not being able to be finished. So let's, and this has been great, but let's kind of. Uh, I, I apologize. Oh, no, that, that's fine. That's fine. Let's go back to uh, one topic, and then we'll allow each other to finish each other's thoughts. And then uh, it'll be a little more, I, I think, smooth uh, that way. So let's go which, ahead. Which one, Ryan? Which one do you want to talk about? You want to talk about fossils? No, we, I want to continue talking about the topic we were, evolution, and how I was trying to see. I'm trying to understand your thought process. Like, I, 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 I've seen your debates, but you stick to a script. I, I'm trying to understand more in depth, like, scientifically and mechanistically what you believe. Okay. Like, do you so that's why i'm asking these questions because the world most of the world believes evolution and in science you're in the minority you're the one with the burden of proof evolution might be on trial but i'm defending it you're the one prosecuting it so i am just uh, to defend it properly i'm trying to understand where you're coming from and that's why i ask about the plants or life in general we can talk about plants animals or all life i don't care it, it had to have started from somewhere, and you're claiming that it all started on one day. And that's that's just ridiculous. We know that things are older than that. We know that that tree in your video, for example, is older than that. So that's this is the topic I want to stick on currently. Unless you want to change it, we can. We the, oh, don't well. don't let me run the debate. We can we can do this how you want to do it. Okay. First of all, you're trying to under you're trying to not understand what I'm saying clearly. Clearly, you know, because you don't. Okay, you don't get it. I believe in science. Science is what we can observe and study and test and demonstrate. We observe cows produce cows. That's observable. Nothing else is is, is would, putting a chart claiming that cows have a a family tree that goes back to an amoeba is not science. Nobody's ever seen an amoeba produce a non amoeba. We're, they've seen billions of them get produced in the laboratory. They have a generation time. Some of them as short as eight hours. Get born, okay, I apologize up. to interrupt, but again, not amoeba, protist. You've already been told this so many times. Stop sorry, saying amoeba. Go ahead. Okay, protista. Okay. So you believe that right here, I'll show you right uh, Okay, protista right here. The protista, the protozoa, turn to a biology teacher. Has anybody ever seen a protozoa produce a non-protozoa? Well, of course not, because it takes millions upon millions of years. Which so it's is, not science. Well, it's not science. It's it is science. No, you don't see That's, it happen, Ryan. This is we do, point. and and for example, we have we have seen it happen. With um, give me a second. I have it here. In in, in the eighties, there, uh, Lenski's long term evolution experiment. He has twelve population of E. coli evolving since the eighties, and a couple of them have evolved the ability to metabolize citrate while others are all still doing you know just glucose and again i'm not an expert so i'm sorry i can't explain it very well but my point is we have observed evolution we just don't have enough time to observe it like you want to and again nobody says evolution that something will produce something else like it doesn't say a cow will produce a tree or vice versa like that's insane all it's saying is 
that life started from a single point, from a single organism where you're claiming, and this is why I go to the Bible, because this is your only evidence, that it start that on day three, he created all of them. Now, to me, that just isn't logical. It makes way more sense, as I said earlier, that this God. Okay, Ryan, let me just stop you right there because you did bring up Lenski's uh, E. coli bacteria. So before we bring uh, too many extra points onto the table, let's maybe stick with that. Okay. And uh, Kent, go ahead. Okay. You mentioned that the E. coli experiment, they finally, if I got E. coli, that was able to metabolize something else. In other words, the E. coli bacteria now has a different diet. It's still an E. coli bacteria, Ryan. If I change to be a, a plant eater or a meat eater or something else, I'm still a human being. Changing the diet, allowing it to digest something new, is not evolution. We didn't it, allow it to. It evolved to. That's it the evolved, point. No. Maybe it already had that trait as a recessive gene. To well, allow it didn't because that's the point evolution. of the experiment. It evolved right. the ability to do that. Well, Just you like love, you, you love ahead, using sorry. that word evolved to try to give it some credibility. I it's think not credibility. It, you read the definition. I, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but you read it. Evolution, you're, that, that first definition you put up with the two points. The one was pertaining to evolution talking about life, and the other one was pertaining to evolution talking about things change, things evolve, they adapt. And that's what it did. So you think the, the, the E. coli being capable of digesting a new food source is enough to make you believe the E. coli over trillions of generations and billion, I'll give you quadrillions of years to change it to a no, whale. No, just billions. Okay. Do you think the E. coli is the ancestor or the bacteria or the protozoa is the ancestor of whales? The, the protus absolutely is, yes. And or I don't know which particular type, and we don't know where life originally started. But again, you're now you're like, not to, you know, you keep talking about point switching, you're going to abiogenesis now, but regardless, well, I don't care. We'll talk about it. So that's the point. We have a mechanism and logic to what we have an original organism that over billions of years and little tiny changes and, you know, C to a T and whatever in the genetic code eventually made everything that we have today. Your stance is that it all happened in 4,300 years magically, basically. That's where, that's why evolution is a science and what you believe isn't. We have tests and theories. Science isn't just knowing. It's, there is theory behind it as well. That's, it starts with a the theory. So if you kiss a frog and it turns to a prince, that's a fairy tale. But if you wait billions of years and the frog turns to a prince, that science. So you're no, because the frog doesn't turn into a prince. It oh, turns into a at... bunch of different other types of frogs. It, it, the, the protus doesn't turn into a whale and then a human or whatever. It turns into another single cell organism and then another and then maybe a multicellular organism. Then that turns into another one and another and another and another and it keeps going over. It's this is what this is why it doesn't fit with your theory and this is why you not only offend not offend, I mean, that's the wrong word, but why it's disgusting that you miscredit not only science, but religion as well. Religion can be a beautiful thing, and you're making it ugly and making it even more illogical than it already was. Well, this is why they call me the atheist's worst nightmare. Got it. I, I'm trying to get you guys to stop and think. Nobody don't say has... you guys. I'm not an atheist. I don't okay. claim to say there's no God. I don't claim to believe there's right. no God. Very good. That's step one. Yeah. No, it's not step one. It's the only logical stance to say that oh, you don't okay. know right. because has you can't be a, know. Has to be a designer, right? But no. Why chart... does there have to be? Why does there have to be a designer? Okay. Explain that. The charts show to the kids in school that all life forms came from a single cell, whether it be a protista or an amoeba or a bacteria. There's twenty thousand different kinds of single-celled organisms. Pick one. Okay. The textbooks say. All the many forms of life on Earth today descended from a common ancestor found in a population of primitive unicellular organisms. Unfortunately, no traces of those events remain. This isn't science. You don't see it. You can't prove it happened. These family trees are pure imagination. They what? did prove it happened. I mean, that just that, that E. coli experiment is just one experiment that proves it happened. It, it, it does happen. We everything evolves, like I said, Ryan. everything from life to technology. But regardless, okay, then what 
why is it all designed? Where is your evidence for that? You're the one right. prosecuting here, Kent. I'm you're, defending. You're going on to another topics again. Donnie, we got to slow this down, stick on one topic. You can, So you are you. Said, what are you talking about? You're jumping okay. all over the place. You because went from talking about this tree to Ryan, you, you brought first. up you brought up religion Ryan, too. Ryan, you went first in your 10 minute opening and brought up 20 topics. One topic at a time. Where is the evidence for any animal producing a different kind of animal? What's the best one you know of? An E. coli getting a new food source and still is still an E. coli? Is that the best evidence you've got? It's, it's, it might still be an E. coli, but it's a different type of E. coli, a different species, if you will. But I don't want to say that because you say it's a slippery term. So once again, it, it, like, we haven't had enough time to observe this. This is a whole point. Like that's what I, but and once and I still you claim I'm going on a different topic, but you are as well. Time, more time. That's your yeah. pacifier. That's your pacifier. You can turn. You believe you can turn an amoeba or a protozoa. I'm sorry, into all these creatures. All these creatures on this chart: the eagles, the the bears, the whales, the elephants, came from an E. coli over billions of years. Is that what, is that what you believe? Yes. Okay. Uh, every everything came from a, a common ancestor. Yes, absolutely. Okay. You believe you believe that as well. You just believe it in a much more rapid variation, or no, you no. believe they all came from multiple organisms that were all laid down at, on one day, whatever a day was. You still have yet to describe that back then. Okay. Before the sun, before the right. earth would have even revolved. But okay. All right. There are currently eight species of bears. Scientists have divided them up into eight kinds of bears. I believe they had a common ancestor called a bear, not an E. coli. Okay, there's 335 species of varieties of dogs. Any dog breeder will tell you. I had a family tell me, said, "Bro, we've been in the dog breeding business for 100 years. I can promise you." These these folks said, "You give us 20 generic mutts. You pick out any mutts you want. We can selectively breed, and in 100 years, we'll bring back the Chihuahua, the Great Dane, and everything in between." But it's still a dog. You can't go outside of dog when you crossbreed. Five hundred. But it's species. a different kind of dog. They're still like dog. They're still. But it's a, a dog. different kind of dog. It has a different genetic code. Like it, it is different. So why is that not a different kind? What then? That's why you you told you said in the beginning you didn't want me to bring up the definition of a kind, but that's where you're falling short. Then what? So what is a kind? Is a kind just a dog and a bear are two different kinds? So the, or or is a Great Dane and a Chihuahua a different kind? If it's not, why does it have different genetic coding? Why do they well, obviously look completely different and whatnot? I, I did answer that very clearly. If you turn all the animals loose, they will pick their own kind. The dogs do not show any interest in the bears other than to avoid them. And the bears don't show any interest in the cows. There are 400 species of cows, cattle breeds, they call them. They're still cow. They, the males of every one of these knows which one's the same kind. Do you show no. any interest? Never mind. I won't go that down that road. Okay. Uh, they are for, no, 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 no. Stick to it. Like you said, one point at a time. Those okay. cows are different kinds. What are you talking about? You just said okay. it. So, if, where did those cows come from? Were all of them on the ark, or did they all come? Like that's what I'm saying. You still believe in evolution, or are no. they not different kinds? I believe the original cows getting off of Noah's ark were able to produce babies that turned out to be cows. Some were bigger. Some were smaller. Farmers quickly realized, hey, this one gives more milk. Let's crossbreed all the good milk givers, or let's crossbreed all the beef cows. And they have developed breeds of cows. They're still cows. They still had a common ancestor, a cow. So are That's different, not evolution. Are different breeds not different kinds? And that not is evolution. Kind. That's actually a man type of man-made evolution, essentially. It's not a different so kind. Is it's it, is a it, cow. So, so they're not different kinds. So those different breeds, as you call them, are not different kinds. They are not Absolutely. different species. They are not different kinds. Not, not, don't use the word species. Uh, okay, fair. Are... So they're not different kinds. So that's that's where I'm struggling then because you – why why did they not – let's stay away from cows for a second and go to any other animal, wild animal preferably. Why, why did the, these breeds, I guess, if you want to call them that – why are only some of them found in certain parts of the world and not the other? Like Very good the, question. Fair question. I think man has developed different types of cows or wheat. In the case, I've got the slide up here. No, let's, now, let's let's go to a wild animal. Cows, not, not, a not, okay. No, let's go to a not man 
interfered animal. Let's go to any wild animal you want. Okay. Why Why are there different types or, I guess, not kinds, great, but different breeds in different That's because, parts of the world? It's because of something called natural selection. If all the dogs were let loose in Alaska, only the ones with long hair. Not, not dogs. Hair. Let's uh, go to a wild animal. Okay. Nature would select the ones to survive that can handle that environment. If all the dogs were turned loose into, or the cows were turned loose into the desert, many of the breeds man has developed would not survive. Natural selection works, artificial selection works, but it's a selection process. It doesn't create anything. It selects which ones survive. Well, it you does, guys, it, create, it creates different types of breeds. You want to turn it into a creative process. It doesn't it does. create anything. It, it creates different breeds. You just said it. You said yourself that they're different breeds. They're not kinds, but they're breeds. So you're using a different word, but regardless, it still creates Ryan. different breeds. Right. So what are you talking about? It, it didn't create any new information. It did. That's why they're different breeds. That's why they, when they procreate, they, sh they show up differently okay. in a different type of breed than the other ones or a different kind, if you will. They, that's my point. They do evolve. And, and in certain parts of the world, Certain types of animals evolve differently than others. Okay, Ryan, here I have six different breeds of cows. Which one has different information that the other ones don't have? They all do. Yay! Then you're getting it. There, no new information was added. Some I just said they selected. all do. They all no, have different that's information. That's not evolution. Some every, farmers. Listen, 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 every single. Well, I, I'm just going to jump in here real quick, and it, it's going smooth, but there are some people in the chat that are saying there's a little too much interrupting. I'm not saying on anyone's behalf, but what no, happens? I know. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm trying <laughs> not. What to. happens is, is when there's interrupting, there's echo, and it's hard to hear each other's points. So let's just, for the remainder of the discussion, let's hand it to Kent. Kent, take as long as you need to respond. Ryan, you take as long as you need to respond, and let's Fair go enough. back and forth that way. So let's say Kent says something you disagree with. Don't worry. Sit back patiently. You'll get equal time to respond, so on and so forth. So we've had some good back and forth there, but let's try and do equal time now. Okay, go ahead, Kev. Okay. In all of human history, farmers have only been able to select part of an existing gene code. They have selected the cows that give more milk and capitalized on that. They've selected the gene code of cows that have more beef, and they capitalized on that. They didn't create anything. They didn't create wings on the cow. They didn't create two heads or five heads. They didn't create anything. They selected something already in the gene code. That's the case with everything, with wheat, cows, corn, potatoes, you name it. All we do, all we've ever seen is natural selection or artificial selection. Works just fine, but it doesn't create any new information. That's not evidence that the cows are related to a protozoa or descended from a protozoa. All the protozoa they've ever raised in the laboratory had baby protozoa. Evolution is something that only takes place in your imagination. It doesn't happen in science. Science, what we can observe and study and test. Show it to me today, not, not given enough time. That's long ago and far away. This is a fairy tale. All you have, Ryan, is a fairy tale religion. You don't have any science to back up your theory. These charts are not based on science. These family trees they make are based on wild imagination. There's no reason to put any of those lines on this chart. Now, you might have a chart with all the bears connected to a bear. Maybe, there, maybe that could be proven. It could not be proven the bear came from a protozoa. Why do you believe something like that? Who taught you that? Anyway, get your money back, whatever you do. Go ahead. Okay. And Ryan, go ahead. Take uninterrupted time, and then we'll, we'll yes. keep going back and forth that time. Go ahead. So, once again... These different breeds, as I was trying to say, do have different information. Every tiny little mutation, doesn't matter what it is, is new information. And you've been told that, of course. And these cows or whatever animal you want to use, once again, you, you claim you want this evidence on my side, but where is yours? You don't have any, nothing at all. And these, why are these different breeds not different kinds when they do have different genetic information? Go ahead, Kat. All the evidence is on my side. Nobody's ever seen a cow produce a non-cow. Nobody. All the evidence points to, wow, the cows bring forth cows. 
And the Bible says they're going to bring forth after their kind. Huh, maybe that's true. But see, you guys want to teach the kids that the cows came from a protozoa. Do you believe cows came from protozoa over trillions of generations? Yes. Okay, that's not science. Let's emphasize the word again. Do you believe cows came from a protozoa? No, I know they do. You know they do? Yes. Okay. Could you please show me a protozoa produce something that's non-protozoa? Can you show that to me? Well, of course not, because once again, even though you apparently don't like the word, we don't have enough time to show you that. Go ahead, so, go. It, it's still, once again, where y you say you have evidence, but your only evidence is saying, I don't, I, no one has ever seen this. So that, well, that's science, not evidence. Ryan, science. A, a science has evidence. I go. That's why I'm asking. Where's the evidence? And you said we don't have it because it takes too long. Then for you no, don't I, have it. I'm, I'm saying we might not have. We have evidence of life changing. We have evidence of life evolving. That's, but you don't believe in any of it. You just, you don't, you either that or you don't understand it. I don't know which, but what is your evidence then? What, what is it? Cause you don't, you haven't, pr you haven't produced any evidence. You just said that my evidence is nobody has ever seen this animal produce a different animal, even though evolution does not say that. Millions I'll even say billions of farmers in the history of the world have observed cows produce cows. Nobody has ever observed a cow produce a non-cow. They've observed some have slightly more milk. They already made milk. They didn't start producing, you know, bananas growing out of their skin. No new information was ever added. It's still cow. Very much 100% recognizable by a three-year-old with two functioning brain cells. It's a cow. It's only you evolutionists that have this dream. Wow, look at that. That's proof cows came from a protozoa. And you just said you believe they came from a protozoa. I'm just saying, A, that's not science. It's not observable. I think, B, it's real dumb. Go ahead. Well, I mean, every you, you do kind of observe it, though, in a sense, because every life starts at a, not a protozoa, but a singular cell organism. We all start with one cell, and then we grow and evolve into this or whatever a cow but still you're not producing any evidence you're just saying cows produce cows but and they don't produce non-cows or bananas grow on their skin but that's not what evolution says happens it says they change very very minutely over an extremely long span of time so that i i just I don't know. I don't get. Ah, oh, yes. Here we go with the past fire. I do appreciate the different prop. I got to say, it's better than okay. the SpongeBob thing. It does make you look way more ridiculous. So I do like that. All right. Well, thank you for admitting about eight seconds ago. You really don't get it. I understand. You really don't. You said a single cell grows into a human during fertilization, sex process, etc. I agree. That's because it's following a design code. It's already coded into the genetic code of the sperm and the egg to all the way to produce a human. That's not evolution. You said that's evolution for a single cell, sperm and an egg to unite and turn to, that's not evolution. That's following. No, 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 body. it's not evolution. Good, I, I good, agree. Good. I'm just it's saying it's a type of way I guess to see it is again, you can't. Cause like I said, there isn't enough time. And there you go. That, that's my whole point, but still. You, I don't know yet. <laughs> so where, where is your evidence that on the contrary, that all these breeds or kinds or whatever came from, you know, well, your, you know, 4,000 years ago or whatever. Where, well, where is that evidence? Once again, you're off topic. It's evolution that's on trial. Where's the evidence of an amoeba or bacteria or protozoa or E. coli producing something other than the same kind? Getting I mean, any you and I, we're, we're the evidence. That's, that's part of the evidence right Correct. there. Us, us being here. Getting any E. coli to now develop a new diet that can eat something else, it's still an E. coli. It didn't change to something else. There's no new information added. Where's it is. That new information is why it can now metabolize that. I suppose I could learn to make myself eat onions if I, I hate onions, but I'll, you know, I probably could make myself learn, okay? But I'm still a human. The E. coli did not produce anything other than baby E. coli. Yes, that then changed with new information to be able to metabolize differently. To it evolved to a different 
type or kind of E. coli. That's my whole, that's the whole point. It's okay. It's still an E. coli. Do you think it's, that it is, is but it's a different kind? No, it's a different breed of E. coli. Let's call it a breed, like the cows. Uh, they are still cow. Let me tell you, put the picture up again. Maybe you'll get it this time because you're right. You don't get it. Would you say all of these would be in the cow kind? No, I would say they're all different kinds of cows. How, why do they call them cattle breeds? These are dairy breeds. They give more milk. Well, that, that's just cows, though, too. Like, I mean, okay. every, every there's still species and subspecies to every type of life. And that's that's the whole point. Like, for your view to be true, it would have had to have happened so rapidly that we would notice it. But we don't because it happened over billions of years. Oh, no. We do notice the changes, and we notice they are limited. They try to get smaller and smaller dogs. They reach a limit. Well, we can't get past, you know, the toy chihuahua, whatever. Why don't they get a dog as small as a flea? There are I mean, animals. Who, who, say, who says they can't? Well, they haven't. Is, They've been trying. Have they? Is that a thing yeah. people are trying? A lot, of, a lot of dog breeders. People love to buy them little they, toys. They want to get a dog as small as a flea? They try to get the teacup chihuahuas, and they get a bunch of money for them. Ask any dog yeah. breeder. These are unique brand. Like my wife has a Pugly Ugly, you know. She likes the thing. Use, completely useless dog. They Through crossbreeding, they developed a dog that's now useless. Okay, but it's still a dog. Why, why is it useless, though? Is it because it has new and different information than There's some no of new its ancestors? I trust me, the pug has lost just about all the information you can lose and still be a dog. Okay? That's not, it's still a dog. Okay? So they didn't create anything new. No new information was added. The thing lost 90% of its brain, 80% of its body. It, the tongue hangs out the side all the time. They still call it a dog. And it is barely, but it's, there isn't any evidence that the pug or any dog came from a protozoa or a bacteria or an amoeba. You want the kids to be taught these charts that all the animals came from a common ancestor. This is well, a religion. It isn't science, Ryan. This is a religious chart right here on the paper, right here. Nothing but religion. Truthfully, I want the kids to be taught science. I mean, Me all too. of it. Me too. Well, you don't, though. You want them to be taught your science of the world is only 4,000 years old. No, but anyway, let's, let's go, let's go back to evolution. So let's talk, where, where do you draw the line? I just, I need to know this so I can understand it. Where do you like, I'm obviously let's, let's go from a human perspective. I'm related to my parents, related to my grandparents, related to like, how far do you go back until you decide that? Okay. No, that's no longer the case. We're no longer related. We're now a different kind. Like, what, what, what is the limit or what is the line, I guess? Okay, I would be willing to bet if we could dig up your great, 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 great grandparents, they would be human. You can go back as many generations as you want. You're going to go back to Adam eventually. Uh, and that's it. Everyone was human. Everyone. There, there's no change. Might be okay. hair, less hair, you know, taller, shorter. Uh, smarter, dumber. You might even eventually get some humans to believe they came from a protozoa. That would be the capital D, D dumb, but that's okay. That's fine. They're still human. I, I do. Yeah. I, I got to say, I do appreciate the comedic, you know, part of it. It does oh, no, keep I'm, it fun. I'm, I'm serious. Um, but anyway. I think it's dumb. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, I know, but you still present it in a funny way. And I, I was Good. just, I was thank, paying you a compliment. You. Um, but anyway, so, so let's say that then. So we all go back to Adam and Eve. Okay. So then why is the, what about the, types of kinds or whatever you want to call it breeds of people that came before them or almost people or almost apes. You know what I'm saying? Like the in-between, what are those in your worldview? It didn't happen. Their imagination. Monkeys have always made baby monkeys. Apes make baby apes. Gorillas make baby gorillas. Humans make baby humans. There's no connection between them. None. So what it's are, what are those examples that we found then that are in between? Found that are, there aren't it. They find bones in the dirt. They're dead. That's, you don't know they had any kids. You don't know they're related to anybody today. You can arrange them in order you like, but that's not science. All we've observed is humans make baby humans. Ask any medical doctor that delivers babies. I delivered my son at home. I knew right away. That's a human. Yeah, but I didn't ask about that. I asked the in-between, you know. There aren't any. Those, they don't exist. Then, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing in between. Then what were, those, what were those bones that they found? Well, were they? dead. They were dead. 
No, I'm not saying I know they're dead, but what when they were alive, because at one point they were, okay. what were they? Either, either they were alive or they were already formed bones just in the ground. I don't well, know if you, so you're wanting to get into the what they typically call cavemen, okay? Uh, the so-called uh, in-between. Nobody could prove any of those are related to humans. There, there may be some species of apes or chimpanzees or monkeys or orangutans or uh, bonobos or whatever they are. How many that are now extinct. Extinction is the opposite of what you need for evolution. We don't see anything new coming on the scene. If you found an unusual animal in the ground, dead, the bones, and you say, wow, well, none of these are left alive today. T-Rex, for example, I think, I believe they're probably extinct. Okay? What, that's not intermediate between anything. It certainly didn't turn to a chicken. That You guys can believe whatever you want. The bones they find in the dirt and they classify as in between apes and humans are imagination. Putting a line on paper between humans and, and apes is not science. Show me a monkey produce a non-monkey. Show me an ape. Show me any of the, we we'll call it the apes or baboons, producing a human. Biden might be the only exception to the rule. But otherwise, it doesn't happen. Baboons make baby baboons every time. There is no intermediate, and no fossil would count. So you, if they find a bone that, they, wow, that looks halfway. You don't know it had any children. There's none today doing it. No monkeys today are producing anything other than baby monkeys. It just doesn't happen, Ryan. It's all imagination. Well, that was a long way around the question. Uh, what were they then? The, the, you said you claim cavemen. So what are cavemen? Where do they fit? Oh, they're the always worldview? There have always been people who live in caves, okay? There still are today. I think they find some with bigger brow ridges, okay? I think it's demonstrated when you chew the masseter muscle, the frontalis muscle, etc., they pull on the bone. Any weightlifter will tell you the more you pull on the lift weights and get the bigger muscle, muscles bigger, the bones actually grow bigger too. The brow ridge of somebody who was living to be seven or eight or nine hundred years old, like the Bible says they did, would grow much bigger brow ridge. Doesn't prove it's part eight. It's proof the guy's living a long time. That's all. Your occipital bone will enlarge by uh, the, mass or the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscles pulling on the back of your uh, neck, lifting your head up. Eventually, your head gets longer. Okay? That's not proof of being an ape. It's proof they're living a long time. The Bible says they live to be 900. A lot of legends talk about the golden age when man used to live to be 1,000. I think there's over 200 uh, cases now where I believe the 200 numbers, right? They find ancient cultures that talked about a golden age. They said, wow, man used to live to be a thousand. Why would they all make up that same story? The Bible says they live to be 900. I, I believe that. I, I'm not, it's my, not, not my job to prove that. But that might explain why some of the, it might be diseases. People that get diseases today have deformed skeletons. There's dwarfism. There's gig giantism. There's all kinds of diseases or uh, abnormalities that can cause deformity of skeletons. It doesn't prove we're coming from apes. They're still human. Uh, uh, what's the guy, the giant, what's the big guy they called it, Andre the Giant? He's still a human. Little three-foot-tall dwarfs, they're still human. There isn't any example alive today or in observed history of an ape or bunkie or baboon producing anything other than the same kind. That's all I wish you guys would admit. I'll show you the picture here. All right. Oh, there we go. They line up the creatures. Here we go. Lemurs, tarsiers, monkeys, orangutans, chimpanzees, humans, gorillas, going back to a common ancestor. This is not science. It's not true. It's propaganda. That's all it is. Drawing lines on paper, connecting them all, is not science. All it is is propaganda. It's imagination. Long ago and far away. We don't see it happen today. Monkeys are still making babies. Let's see it again. Why do you believe this? Why do you believe this chart is showing the truth here? Yeah, to I mean to a degree. Obviously, that is you know from a more maybe high school, even middle school, or even maybe postgraduate type book. But still, it's not in it's not very in depth. But that doesn't matter. Um, back to the caveman thing, like we were originally talking about. What so, so they were before Adam and Eve, or you're claiming that they were just so old that that's what they grew up to be? Because it's not like we just found one example and said, boom, that's it. Okay, this is how it works. So there are multiple examples. That, that, that's like this is again where I'm struggling. Okay, 
the Bible, this is a chart I made from the dates given right in the Bible. Genesis chapter 5 gives the dates of all the people going down to Noah, and they live to be roughly 900, 969 is the oldest with Methuselah. After the flood, it dropped off to 400, and then 200, and then 100. This is what the Bible teaches, but I'm not asking that to be taught, and that's not this debate tonight. I think fossils do not form today at all in any significant numbers, and maybe not at all at all. So that you said, why didn't they leave a trail of fossils coming from Noah's Ark? What animals today leave trails of fossils? Animals die all the time. If a herd of uh, deer migrate from Canada down to Texas, they don't leave a trail of fossils behind. They leave a bunch of dead bones and the, and the buzzards eat them and the coyotes drag them around. There are no fossils forming today. All the fossils we're finding are probably evidence of a flood. That's the only way you get fossils is to bury it quickly. Like the petrified clam in the closed position had to be buried alive quickly or it would have opened. Clams open as soon as they die. And somebody eats them, the crabs or the seagulls or the fish. So I think all fossils are evidence of a flood. Okay, but so that, that's fine. Let's talk about fossils then, if you want to talk about that. Um, so then you say no fossils are forming today. What about the bones that don't get eaten or whatever? What about the ones that do sit there, slowly get buried? They're going to turn into a fossil one day. No, they're going to decay. Show me no, what show, show, they're show going me to what. turn into a fossil, like no, fossils have. You imagine this. Show me an example of it happening. How many Civil War soldiers died? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I, I'm in Alabama. There was Civil War. The Civil War was fought just, you know, 140, 160 years ago. Find me a fossilized Civil War soldier. Tens of thousands were buried. Go dig up a grave from a Civil War soldier or World War II soldier or World War I or the Revolutionary War. Go dig up George Washington. Are his bones fossilized, do you think? No, of course not. That wouldn't well, make sense. There it's not, they're, they're not, they haven't been, for one, he's in a casket, but let's talk about the Civil War ones. They haven't been there long enough. But the caveman type thing that I was talking about earlier, that has, and it formed into a fossil. So I'm... Well, fossil, certainly we know fossils exist. There, yeah, I got and we know how old they are because no, of radiometric. No, data. we don't know that. I've got a whole museum at our science center full of fossils of all kinds of things. No, fo no question. Fossils exist. I think they require very special conditions to form. Instant burial in mud, preservation from oxygen, because the bones, that the people that they bury in just a wooden casket, the bones and everything dissolve. They don't, bones and everything, they don't fossilize. Fossils are not forming today unless they're buried in mud, just like the flood would do. I'm making a statement. I believe I'll call it 99.99999% of all the fossils in the world form because of one flood. So the bones they're finding with the larger brow ridge or the longer occipital bun are probably fossils of some of these 900 year old people that died in the flood because they didn't believe Noah and get on the ark. So show me what, show me any civil war soldier that has fossilized the, I'll tell you what, dig up the grave. The bones have dissolved to powder. Bones and all. They did not yeah, fossil. Do you, do you not know what a fossil is? Uh, the fossils, yeah. fossils aren't bones. They're the impressions. No, it's not. That's, a, that's an impression fossil. It's a replacement fossil where the min minerals in the ground have replaced the cells. Yeah, and then they're calcium not. forms around the bone, too, for those types of fossils. There's but regardless, several, they're still I, fossils. I, I taught this for years. There are several different types of fossilization yeah. processes. Replacement fossil is what most of them are that they want to build the dinosaurs in museums out of. The bone has been replaced by minerals in the ground. Show me a Civil War soldier where his bones have fossilized with the replacement process. Well, you then... Can... Go ahead. No, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, so then if, if that's the case, then why can't you show... Why can't you make fossils? Why can't you bury bones very quickly in a localized oh, yeah. flood and make fossils? Un under pressure, Joe Taylor at the Mount Blanco Museum in Texas has, uh, I think he's probably got the best uh, knowledge on that topic. I are we able to make fossils today if you bury them under, under mud, under pressure, under heat with enough minerals? Possibly you could replace the bones. But we don't see it happening in nature. How many, well, how many we, Civil War soldiers died? Over a million. That we, we do see it happening in nature. That's what fossils are. It happened in nature. And and you just said, like I said, why can't we do it? And you, you just said we might be able to. Well, why not do know. it then? It, it should be that easy, right? 
Okay, show, it does. It certainly doesn't happen easily. Show me, show me where it happens. Uh, I thought I had a whole section on fossils here. A but, every fossil is an example of how it happened. Every fossil okay. that we found. But no fossil would count as evidence for evolution. You don't know that it had any children. Dig up the Civil War bones. Could you prove that guy had children? No. It doesn't have to have had children. It's still it an example of that population of or organism. And and once again, where <laughs> then what are fossils? If if they didn't take that long to create, what are they? I think the fossils are most of them are replacement fossils where the minerals in the ground have soaked in as the cell decays, the minerals soak in and preserve the shape, exact shape of the of, of the original bone. Yeah. But there's no bone left. But they do find dinosaurs where the tissue is still soft. I mean muscle tissue. Blood cells. I mean, you're cherry picking there, but regardless, oh. it, it's it's still it's still a fossil, and it does show, and and we know how old it is. Like, what, so you don't believe in radiometric dating either? Wait a minute. We know how old it is. You want to go off onto a new topic? Radiometric dating. You don't know no, how old it is. No, we're talking about fossils still. Here, how I'm old saying is you know how old fossils are? Brian, how old is this clam right here, brachiopod? How old is it? Well, what do you? I don't. I I haven't obviously. I can't perform tests on it. I'm not an expert to do that. But there are scientists out there that can and can tell you how old that is. Well, this clam, we have thousands of petrified closed clams in our museum here. They find them in, there's a place in Tennessee, 10 feet thick, millions of petrified clams closed. Had to be buried all rapidly, buried alive. Or it wouldn't have happened like that. Then the clams, if you find a clam, take it to any university, and say, how old is this clam? Take it to your university. First question they're going to ask you, where did you find it? Because they're going to date it by the geologic column, which does not exist anywhere in the world except in the imagination, along with evolution. If it exists in the imagination, along with billions of years. Ryan, billions of years would be your enemy. The sun would have burned out. The moon would no, have... No, it wouldn't have. No, if you're going to talk about going on different topics, the sun would not have burned out. Do you not realize yeah. how massive the sun is? Anyway, mm -hmm. back to the fossils, because you're trying to go on something else. Okay. We we do know how old they are. Like, that's that. there's no debate that we do. That That is... That is a, that is a science that we do. See, this is what I was talking about in the beginning, why it's dangerous. You're not just discrediting evolution. You're trying to discredit science in general. You're misrepresenting science and religion. Okay, I am trying yeah. to purify science. There are some impurities that have gone into our science class. Uh, before Darwin, they, they, you can still take science. Did anybody learn any science before Darwin? Yeah, th forget Darwin. Darwin doesn't matter. Evolution okay. doesn't rely on Darwin. And back before to fossils. Okay, no, before the evolution theory came up, did anybody study science? Did Archimedes? He didn't believe in evolution. Did he do anything with science and buoyancy and all that kind of stuff? Sure. Science. science is, evolution is unnecessary for science. It's not part of science. It's a religious belief. We don't observe any of it. You don't need it. No medical doctor in the world thinks about evolution when he's doing surgery. He better know his anatomy. This is the biceps, the triceps, the femur, the, you know, the, in the yeah, leg. I know what anatomy is. Sure. He doesn't need to do, now, evolution is a useless theory, if nothing else, but it's not, there's no evidence for it. But you're the not earth? just discrediting evolution. You're discrediting so many different types of no, science. No, no, Radiometric no. dating, no. astronomy. Like you're, you're no. discrediting a lot. Okay, We're Ryan. trying to, I should Let's say. just take astronomy. The Big Bang Theory says the star, the universe, observable universe, is 56 billion light years across. But it's only 17 or 13 billion years old. Wait, wait, wait. If you had an explosion no, from a dot, expansion. Oh, sorry, rapid expansion. Oh, yeah, rapid expansion. If no, your dot, just expansion. Yeah, if your dot rapidly expanded 13.7 billion years ago, then it should only be 27 and a half light years across. But it's 56. What happened? Did the matter travel faster than the speed of light? We, we observe that now because the universe is still expanding. I agree the universe is expanding. Because of the red shift. I agree. I don't discredit astronomy. I love it. We got a stargazing deck up here. How many telescopes do we have in our science center? We, we got both the reflectors. Well, you are discrediting it, though, because astronomy oh. says that it all, you just you just did. Astronomy oh. is, the Big Bang Theory is part of astronomy. And you're saying in your world that 
you know, a deity just all of a sudden popped and bam, there's the sun and there's the stars. That's not what astronomy says at all. Not even close. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ryan, you believe there was a pop and a bang or whatever you want to call it, and everything came from a dot smaller than a proton. No, that's okay. just the theory. That's not okay. proven. We don't know that. Well, then no why, are we teaching, we know that. why are we teaching that in school as if it's part of science? We're teaching it as a theory. No, it you're is. not. Yes, it's I'll called the Big Bang Theory. Here we go. Here's it's not the called textbook. the Big Bang Proof. The textbooks right here show kids this picture. Oh, there we go. The Big Bang. Theory. 13.772 billion years ago, everything was in a dot. This isn't science. This is, this is the only thing they present in the textbook. Are there any other theories to compete with this Big Bang Theory? Yeah, absolutely. I said one earlier. Carl Sagan even said it himself. What if the universe was just always here? We don't know. That okay, doesn't wait, matter. Wait, wait. Oh, astronomy... is that the only two? wait, wait, wait. Is that the only two? Either it came from a Big Bang or it's always been here? Is there no, a third theory? of course theory? not. There, there, could be, there, is, and there is a bunch of theories out there. The okay. point is you're discrediting all of them. You're saying your theory no, no, no. is that it just – something just created it out of nowhere. Okay, let's give it like a third your theory. theory isn't even much different than the Big Bang Theory, quite frankly. Well, my theory says God created the heaven and the earth. Why isn't yeah. my theory taught? Well, it can be. It can be taught in religion, in religion class or theology class, social studies even, well, history. The Big it, Bang it, it, it is taught in certain schools. No, big, this should be in a religion class too. This, if not, not science, nobody's seen this. No, because that is a scientific theory, and that's what it's taught as. I don't know what school you went to, but I was taught in my school, which also did have a religion class. I sure. was taught it was a theory because it is. Right. And so Carl Pagan adds another one and says, oh, it's just always existed. Man, you Why, love those little jokes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is not even a good theory. It's a religious belief. It violates the laws of thermodynamics. Where did well, it, it is it is a decent theory because if it's expanding, it's logical to think that it at one point started at a single point. It's it, again not proven. It is a theory, but okay. it's still it's a more logical theory than a deity just went boom and there was the stars and wait he created the earth first and then he created the sun and then he created the stars because that makes more sense somehow. Okay, I'm going to jump in, guys. Let's do this because it's been a ton of fun. It's been very lively. We are about 12 minutes over on the discussion portion. Uh, Ryan, since you started the discussion, Kent, let's give you the final word on the discussion. So feel free to wrap up your thoughts and points. Then we'll do, let's say, three-minute closing statements. Uh, we'll do a shorter closing statements just so we can get to some audience questions. So, Kent, go ahead in terms of the discussion. Uh, have the last word. Makes a, a few final points. Okay. Again, 40 topics on the table here. Uh, I'll have to do a whack an atheist, just uh, uh, whack a uh, evolutionist, just, just for you, Ryan. Okay. Oh, uh, you can put me under atheist too if you want. I would uh, love it. I would love to react to that video. Please right. do. Evolution, the theory that all came from a dot smaller than a proton, has no supporting evidence. There is no evidence of an amoeba or bacteria or an E. coli or any of them, or protozoa, ever changing to anything else. Getting a new diet being able to digest something new is still an E. coli. So the theory that he wants us to believe in, the religion, I'll say, that he wants us to believe in, that these family trees mean something, is nothing but a religion. And he said, if I recall, he believes he's related to an octopus. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let, add, add that to your chart, uh, Donnie, one that's related to a strawberry. You can believe anything you want. All we've ever observed is octopus make baby octopus, nothing else. Humans make baby humans, nothing else. You're not even capable of making anything else. So these charts are pure imagination. They're not science. I resent everybody being forced to pay for your religion in the school system. You guys need to go start a private school to teach evolution and get it out of our science class to say a protozoa turned to a human is dumb, real dumb. God said they'll bring forth after their kind. That's all we've ever seen. Sounds like maybe that's scientifically accurate. You guys believe protozoa turned to everything, frogs, humans, spiders, everything. This isn't science. That's all. I just wish you guys could admit or understand. You don't even see it. But I wish you could, first of all, see and then admit, wow, I do have a religion. I believe in evolution. You don't know. It's not part of science. It, it, you believe in it. Capital B, believe. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay, thank you, Kent, for uh, those final words in terms of the discussion. That was over an hour of nonstop discussion. So great endurance. That might have been uh, one of our longest discussion portions. Audience was loving it. Uh, maybe we'll have a round two in the future. So, Ryan, if you want to respond you know, to points there, save it for your closing statement here. Let's do three minutes each. So, Ryan, take three minutes. Kent gets three minutes uh, for a concluding statement. Then we'll get into as many questions as we can. Okay, Ryan, go ahead. Floor is yours. Yep. So for my closing statement, it's kind of like my opening one. It, I mean, you don't care about the science. So I'll just explain again why this is so dangerous. I mean, you yourself, you just said to put evolution into a private school for a religious class, but you also throughout the debate shown and said how different types of science and studies of science, scientific fields are also not true. So you're not just denying evolution here. You're denying so much of science, and that is dangerous. It's not only dangerous for the future generations that could potentially have changed the world, but now won't because they adhere to your, I guess, skepticism at light and just straight denial of science. You, you also are putting the world at risk, the planet. I mean, climate science is a thing, and with your worldview – how we understand it doesn't work anymore. We understand it by, you know, ice cores and stuff that go back however many thousands of years, but not to get into that, we, it, none of that works anymore. So science, the entirety of the study is just, you just, I don't know, either don't care, don't know, don't understand it. It's, it's just a dangerous stepping point. And it, I don't know, it's, it's scary. It really is. I mean, the, the amount of people you've influenced and potentially turned away from science and the amount of people you turn away from religion, as I said in the beginning, it's dangerous and disgusting. But I'll keep it short so we can get to questions and go to you. Okay, there we go. Thank you for your uh, three-minute concluding statement, Ryan. Kent, we'll do the same for you. Three-minute uh, concluding statement. Go ahead. Okay, I feel exactly the same about those who are teaching evolution. They are destroying science. They are damaging students. It is dangerous. It is scary. They're turning people away from science, turning people away from common sense. They are endangering students. I taught earth science. I think I could talk, I'll take a quiz on earth science against anybody you know, okay? I think I understand the fault lines and the speed of, the speed of the earth is slowing down a thousandth of a second a day, which means it can't be billions of years old because the earth would be going faster. Of course, it doesn't answer at all the initial speed of the Earth. Where did the Earth come from? How did it get spinning? Why is it in the perfect Goldilocks zone? I think it was designed for that. Okay, But there are lots of limiting factors from Earth science or from biology. If you'd like to talk about biology, I think I could take a pretty good quiz on anatomy or physiology and how it works. Name the different organs and their functions. It's got nothing to do with evolution. Evolution is a dangerous religion. It is destroying students' ability to understand science. You don't even understand that you have a religion. You think evolution is part of science. You don't. You cannot see it. And you've been brainwashed, completely brainwashed. So I think the evolution theory is turning students away. It's dangerous. It is scary. And what you said about what I'm doing is exactly what you are doing. I'm not doing it at all. I love science. I think we should teach the students. Look, boys and girls, why is the earth wider at the equator than the poles? Oh, it's flattened out a little bit because it's spinning. 1,037.6 miles an hour at the equator, depending upon your altitude. I think I can talk about fault lines, slip fault, strike fault, uh, San Andreas fault lines. I think I can talk about the oceans and the salinity gaining salt every day. They're 3.6% salt right now. Can't be more than a few thousand years old, or they would have gained too much salt. That there's uh, the erosion rates. Grand Canyon probably formed in a week. It wasn't millions of years. It was millions of gallons, millions of gallons. So I think the logical scientific explanation for the world is, God made everything in six days. That's the only way symbiotic, symbiotic relationships work. And there was a giant flood that destroyed the world, formed the, the layers and the fossils, full of fossils, millions of dead things found in rock layers all over the world. Wow, might have been a flood. And these family trees, like Mary Leakey admitted, are a bunch of nonsense. There's not a family tree. There's a tree of humans, but they're not related to the tree of apes. I think it's just pure imagination, and it's dangerous to teach kids that stuff. We're teaching them, kid, you're an animal. And we sit and wonder, why are they acting like animals? Brian, if evolution is true, how do you tell right from wrong? On any topic, how do you tell right from wrong? Where's your standard? I got a standard. I can measure things. Wow, this book says don't kill. 
Why would it be wrong to kill with your religion of evolution? Go ahead. I'm done. Okay, thank you, Kent, for that three-minute concluding statement. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the uh, debate, Kent and Ryan. And let's just get right into these questions. So, um, all right, here we go. Where do I start, I guess? Um, okay, we'll just start from the top. Uh, Tanya Brown, question for Ryan. Is E. coli really proof of evolution considering they could already metabolize citrate and mutations broke the regulatory genes, preventing it in oxygen nets? Ends. I'm not sure that last word. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, again, it is just one small piece of evidence for evolution. It's not to prove it. Um, and yes, it, of course, these things may have existed, but those particular ones did evolve. And that was my point, that we do have evidence and we have shown that things evolve. That's just one example. There are others, of course. <clears throat> I, I think if, if I could um, reiterate her question a little bit in a different way, I, th I think she's asking if if the alteration, the change that was seen in the E. coli bacteria, if it was due to degeneration of pre-existing systems, can that be used for, you know, forward evolution, basically? Oh, but it, uh, yes. Also, yes, because those ones that it started at were not like that. So it's still changed. It's still like evolution doesn't say things have to go forward that's that's kind of a wrong way to look at it it just says that things change things adapt and they evolve that's evolution at its core is just things changing and that's what it did it is a different type kind whatever you want to call it, it has new information that now allows it to metabolize the citrate instead of the other Okay, appreciate it, Ryan. And there was a clarification in the chat. Looks like the ENTS uh, stands for environments. Uh, Kent, yeah. if there's anything you'd like to add, go ahead. Well, it's an excellent question. And all we've ever seen is E. coli produce E. coli. Ch adding something new to the diet, as I said five or six times tonight, doesn't change it. It's, and that's not a process that's going to change an E. coli to a whale over quadrillions of years. It just is imagination. What we observe in science is E. coli always produce E. coli. Nobody's ever seen anything. To, and one E. coli is really complicated. One E. coli bacteria more complicated than New York City. Way more organized. No traffic jam. So I think the, the E. coli is a classic example of an incredible design. Wow. Who designed that little tiny E. coli? I mean, it's pretty tiny. Real tiny. 50,000 E. coli side by side would be an inch long. 50,000. You really think that happened from a dot of near nothing exploding? I'm sorry, rapidly expanding? You need some psychological help if you believe that. So we, he said, we, we see them develop the new ability to digest citrate. First of all, I don't know that that's true. But if I developed a new ability to chew on bones and get something out of them, I'm still human. Getting a new part of your diet isn't proof of evolution. It's not new information. It's adding a new supplement to the, something new to the diet. I don't know how they don't get it, but go ahead. Okay, thank you, Kent. And Ryan, this is your first time debating on this channel. So typically what we do in the Q&A is whoever the question was for, we'll give them the, the last word just to be fair. So Ryan, go ahead if you had a quick final word. Yeah, Ed, again, you just, <laughs> you keep bringing that up. It's nothing, evolution does not say it's going to produce a new organism. It just says that it changes, it gets new information which it has. I know you like, you're claiming because if you can chew on something else or eat something else and you're still a human. Yeah, but that's not what happened here. A new offspring came forth that now has this new information that allows it to do that. That's why it's different. And that's the change. That's the evolution. Doesn't matter if it goes forward, backwards, sideways, whatever. It's still a change, new information. That's evolution. Okay, thank you uh, for the answers, Kent and Ryan. Appreciate the question, Tanya. Next question comes in from Redefine Living. Question for Ryan. There are over 200,000 genetic heritable diseases and as a, result, as a result of mutations. How can you reconcile this with your evolution by mutation conjecture? So there are over... I, I guess I'm... Like I said, I'm in no way an expert, so I am a little, I'm struggling with this one a little bit here. It's, again, I, I, I don't, I guess what I'm not, what you're not seeing is 
it, evolution is just change. It's not like those all those different two hundred thousand whatever diseases. They're all they all started from one point and then changed into all the different kinds or whatever you want to call them. I, and maybe you can clarify for me there what exactly they're trying to ask. Again, I'm not like I said, not an expert in anything, so I'm just too dumb for this question. Sorry. <laughs> No worries. Uh, appreciate it, Ryan. Kent, the floor is yours, brother. Well, this is an example where all mutations that have been observed are harmful or fatal or do neutral. They do nothing. Where is a mutation that added information? If there's a mutation where a person is no longer able to process vitamin C, for instance, in their body, they're going to have a problem. No new information was added. They lost something. The ability, some people are lactose intolerant. They can't, you know, is that a mutation? I don't know. I did some study on that. But is, let's, just, let's assume this number is correct. 200,000 genetic inheritable diseases result in mutations. Let's assume that's correct. Where's the ones that added information? You'd have to have a whole lot of new information to go from a protozoa to a whale. Protozoa don't produce milk. Protozoa can't uh, have a tail. They don't have eyes, respiratory system like that. So... It, it's dreaming, Ryan, absolute dreaming that these changes that you claim happen can add up to make evolution that we to draw these charts that they draw. That's not that's not science. OK, thank you, uh, Kent. Over to you, Ryan. Last word. Yeah, it's uh, I guess that it does kind of. So added is the wrong way to look at it. It's just new information. It doesn't have to. Something if, if something is taken away, then that is new information, regardless of whether you're looking at life or the something as simple as a sentence. Take a word away. You like your analogies. You take a word away. It, the sentence is now a new. Inf it's new information. It's a different sentence, and that's that's what evolution teaches. That's that's the whole point. It, it's uh, that things change. They don't. It doesn't say they have to add something. It doesn't say they have to take away something. It changes. It evolves. Okay, thank you for that final word there. Ryan, next question comes in from Zach. Appreciate the question, Zach. And it's a question for you, Kent. So he asks, weren't Adam and Eve made from rocks or dirt? Oh, for God to take dust of the ground and form a human is very different than to say the dust formed the human by itself. I think you'll find that uh, people can take iron ore out of the ground and smelt it down, make iron, and then turn it into cars and other things like that, or cell towers that Ryan climbs, okay? So I think an intelligent person can take clay and turn it into a statue, for instance. Wow. But that's not to say the statue can form itself. So this is very different. The evolutionist wants the clay, the rocks, to turn to a human without anybody doing it. For a person, or for an intelligent designer like God, to take dust from the ground form it into a man and make it come alive, that's a whole lot more believable than to say the dust of the ground made a man by itself. This had a designer. Okay, appreciate it, Kent. Cool statue, by the way. Um, and Ryan, question? Yeah, it, or it doesn't, um, I guess I'll respond more to kind of what Kent said and this. Uh, exactly that, though. So your belief is that things were just magically made from rocks, but that's not what evolution says. And again, that's talking about abiogenesis, not evolution, but we'll still talk about it. It says that those minerals came from rocks that eventually formed into what we could consider life. It didn't even come from rocks, the water pouring onto them and then, then, and then formed into the minerals that then formed into what we call life. But again, that is just one theory and that's abiogenesis. It's not evolution, but still anyway. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Uh, question was for you, Kent, this time. You get the last word. Go ahead. I definitely believe Adam and Eve were made from the dust of the ground, and God, outside of time, space, matter, did it. That is way more logical than to say the dust of the ground made itself. Organic evolution is certainly part of the theory. Organic evolution, organic evolution, or the origin of life is part of the theory. They want to avoid that like the plague because they don't have an answer for it because it's impossible for the rock to make themselves into a human. I could take bricks and make it into a brick wall. The brick wall cannot make itself. The clay out of the ground cannot make this statue. Can't do it. But a man could with the clay. Okay. 
Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thanks, Kent, for the final word. Next one comes in from Vans182 Workshop. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat, support, and question. Uh, this one's for you, Ryan. So Vans asks, do you believe in the law of monophyly? If so, why didn't the first single-celled creature stay the same? Did it break the law? Stayed the same. Uh, I'm sorry. Did they actually, not Ryan? Yeah, if you could maybe okay. repeat the last three yeah. seconds. So sorry. Go ahead. No problem. Uh, the first single cell creature did stay the same. Stayed the same for a very long time until natural selection, evolution. It evolved a new bit of information that turned it into something slightly different, and then slightly different again, and then again and again and again over billions of years. Of course, millions of years, whatever. But that's that's the point. It it's not that it broke the law. It's it's part of it. That's evolution. It evolved and changed. It's definitely better than believing that it all just popped into existence by a magic being. Thank you, uh, Ryan. Kent, over to you for a response. He just talked out of both sides of his mouth. The law of monophyly says things don't change. They always stay the same kind. Cows always make cows. Bacteria make bacteria. Uh, e. coli make E. coli. But yet, over time, he now wants to have both. He wants to have it stay in the clade, stay in the phylum, monophyly, but also be able to go out of it. Which is it? Which is it, Ryan? That I, your theory does break that law. Ryan, uh, you can, you can okay. respond or have the last um, word. Yeah, absolutely. It, no, again, it doesn't because it's just like the E. coli. Very, very minute, slight changes over a long period of time. Get your pacifier back out. It, it's, it's that's that is evolution, and eventually, yes, it did form into a different kind of creature or breed or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it doesn't matter what word you use. It's how evolution works. It changes. Things change. Things evolve. Everything. Okay, thank you, and gentlemen, thanks for making the debate fun. And one to definitely talk about and remember. So question from Mark Reed. Question is for Kent. Mark Reed and Kent will be uh, clashing this Friday. Should be fun. So Mark asks, you claimed that humans would stop at Adam. Can you demonstrate that claim? No. No, I believe the Bible is true. And every all humans came from Adam and Eve. That is my religious belief. Could I prove it scientifically? No. I think I could prove that humans always make baby humans. That's all any medical doctor is going to say ever, he's ever seen. So to think that humans came from a protozoa is ridiculous. Or I'm sorry, a, a protozoa or an E. coli, whatever. So I, I don't have to demonstrate that claim. I don't have to prove that. The burden of proof is on, let me show you one more time here. Uh, evolution is on trial, not creation. You guys, I admit mine's a religion. You don't admit yours is a religion. Ryan has yet tonight to admit evolution is a religion, but it is. It's on trial. Where's the evidence for it? An E. coli learning to eat something new? Is evidence for those charts? That's one little tiny bit. The only thing he's got is billions of years. So it happens in the imagination. Wow, just imagine. Maybe it happened. It's all imagination. It's not science. Okay, thank you, Ken, for the response. Uh, Ryan, over to you. The floor is yours. Yeah, it, again, like... That's that was part of my point, too. You have no evidence for any of this. And we do. That's why it's not a religion. And also, there's no social structure. There's no moral code. It's evolution isn't a religion. It's a theory, just like the Big Bang Theory. They're all theories, not religion, scientific theories. And before I forget, Robert Beatty says hi, Kent. Almost forgot that. Bob. OK. Oh, Kent, can you repeat that, brother? You're on mute. So sorry. Oh. Tell, tell him to get a real job, okay? <laughs> go ahead. Okay, here we go. Uh, next question comes in from Boomer21. Thank you so much for the uh, support and question. So this one is for you, Ryan. Uh, the moon's orbit travels 1.5 inches yearly away from the Earth. So please explain the presence of the moon for a 4 billion year old Earth. Yeah, um, it does travel away from the Earth, but it hasn't always traveled at that rate. And like, you're just not comprehending the scale of the universe, I guess, there, oh, and, and the, how big and far away these two bodies are. 
I, I understand where you're coming from with this and I do get it, but be careful down that road. Cause you're kind of slipping into almost flat earth territory there. And you gotta, you gotta really be careful when you bring up space to try to refute evolution, especially in this sense. Like it, it's, it, that is something that's easily observable. It, it's we, and you can go back and see, you know, with maths, of course, how it would have had to have traveled just a little slower at previous points in time, especially the further back you go, because this gravitational pull would have been stronger. Okay, thank you, Ryan, for the response. Kent, over to you if you had anything to add. Okay, uh, if you give me one second here. Uh, slide number 505, Alt-DV, 505. On my video number one, I talk about this very problem. There's a problem. The moon is indeed receding. It's leaving us about one and a half inches a year. The questionnaire is absolutely correct, okay? The moon is moving away from the Earth at the rate of four centimeters a year, okay? Forbes did an article on that some couple years ago. Will the moon ever leave the orbit? Yeah, eventually it'll have to leave. Be a long time. We'll all be dead by then. Why is the moon leaving us? Physics.org, okay? The moon's orbit is expanding 3.8 centimeters per year, about inch and a half, like the question was. Well, there's a law in physics called the inverse square law. If you brought the moon into one-third the distance, you take that fraction one-third, flip it over, and square it. It's nine times the gravitational pull at one-third the distance. They've done all the math on this and find out, wow, the moon was closer. Ah, how close can you get before it snaps together like two, uh, two, uh, two magnets? 1.4 billion years ago. That the lunar recession rate demonstrate clearly the recession of the moon indicates the lunar orbit collapses a little over a billion years ago. Astronomical journal. Okay, I like astronomy. And astronomy says, wow, the Earth can't be 4.6 billion years old. There's some science for you, Ryan. There's your astronomy. The lunar semi-major axis is expanding. I understand. I taught math and science. I love science and math. And evolution is not part of science. It's a religion. The, here, I'll show you the article. Look it up yourself. They've known for a long time the moon cannot be 4.6 billion years old. So get a new theory. Okay, thank you, uh, Kent, for that response. Ryan, question was for you. Get the quick final word. Yeah, the moon's not 4.6 billion years old. The, it's just not. That's The moon's not as old as the Earth. It's, it's made up of parts, like the parts of it are as old as the Earth, but still the moon formed separately from the Earth. They're two different bodies, not the same thing. And I, I understand where you're coming from, Kent, with that, and I, I have looked into that. But again, I'm not an expert, and... I'm quite frankly an idiot, but I still know that, yeah, it's it. when you read the actual article and read other ones in the contrary that actually show what happens, it makes way more sense than what you're trying to portray. But anyway. Okay, thank you, uh, Ryan. Next question comes in from Vittoria DeSante. Thank you for the support and question. Question is, uh, I believe for you, Ryan. Uh, let's go through it together. Do different kinds just lose genetic information in order for variety within the kind where does the new genetic dna coding arrive from in order to finally push one kind eventually into another kind yeah so that's i mean i, I can see why that would be for me or even him i guess but i, I that's what i'm that's what i want to know from his perspective like where where what it, that's why it's he doesn't like to define the word kind and why it's so generic. When you talk about species, it's pretty easy to distinguish the two. It's especially with genetic information. But when you talk about kinds, then things just get confusing. I mean, those dogs you talk about there, they do have different information between the subspecies. But again, you just say all dogs are dogs, even including wolf and coyotes and, I guess, do you include foxes in there and stuff like that too? Because they're definitely different and they definitely have different information, different genetic coding. And that, yeah, I want to know that from Kent's perspective for sure. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Uh, Kent, over to you. Well, everything we've observed in all of recorded history says variations can be produced by artificial selection or by natural selection. You can take watermelons and select for smaller or select for larger, but you're not going to change it to anything outside of watermelon. It's going to be the same kind. There are now over a thousand kinds of mangoes. Man has selected, I like this one, it tastes better. I'll raise that in my garden. 
Somebody else says, oh, I like these. They're bigger. I don't know about mangoes. I don't care. But they're still mangoes. Nobody's ever observed an apple produce a non-apple. You have a religious belief that you are related to an apple. So, Ryan, I'll ask you, your chart show apples on that chart having a common ancestor with humans. Do you believe you're related to an apple? Yeah, um, obviously. But again, like just with the mango thing, it's they are different species of mangoes. It just like everything. They're different species. Like they're different kinds. That's why when you say you define the word kind, it's just it's too vague. And that's that's why we have the word species instead of kind. That's why evolution works. And it's why whether you're talking about artificial or man-made evolution or natural evolution, whatever you want to call it, it's still all evolution. It still changes still new information, different species. And again, it, no one says a dog is going to produce a non-dog or whatever. That's not how it works. But you, yeah, I know. You got your script. Ken, did you want to respond? Well, it's not a script, Ryan. I'm right, okay? All we've ever observed is exactly what the Bible said would happen. They bring forth after their kind. E. coli produce E. coli. Apples produce apples. Might be a variety. 17,000 species of wasps, 3,000 varieties of tomatoes, still a tomato. God said they bring forth after their kind. There are no examples of any single cell, multi cell plant, fruit, animal ever doing anything other than bringing forth after their kind. So if they can bring forth, they're the same kind. An apple and a mango cannot bring forth. An apple and a pine tree cannot bring forth. An apple and a human cannot bring forth. But your great, 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 great grandpa was an apple. I'm sorry, related to an apple. It's your great, 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 great cousin, right? 87 million degrees different, levels different. So I don't know how you can't understand that what you have is nothing but a religion. It's never observed. They bring forth after their kind. These phylogenetic trees putting animals, fungi, and plants, apples and animals, humans, going to a common ancestor are, it's criminal to teach that to kids. Teachers ought to be fired for using those charts and teaching that stuff in public school. That, that's, that's destroying kids. Under, kids don't understand. You don't understand science. You went to public school, I bet, and you, taught this, you were taught this stuff, and you're so confused now, you have no clue what science is. Well, what can we observe, study, test? We don't observe this stuff happening. That's why you go to your millions of years all the time. Give me an address, Ryan. I'll get one and send it to you. Pacifier. Okay. Millions. Billions. You want billions on it or trillions? Go ahead. Okay, Ryan, you can have the final word if you'd like. It's a question was for you. Oh, um, yeah, sure. It's again billions, not trillions. Um, okay. and it, it's it still comes down to they're they are different. They have different genetic information. I don't get what you don't understand about that, and you don't understand science equally as much as I don't. Probably more so because you're teaching it wrongly if you are teaching it, which you don't have a degree. So I don't see how you ever did. Okay, let's let's keep it clean, gentlemen. Uh, Seth Pitcher, uh, thank you for the super chat. And uh, Ryan's question for you, short and sweet. If I told you 10 different lies, would you still say I am telling the truth? Hmm. Interesting question. I actually, I like that. So no, obviously. But again, I'm trying to correlate this with evolution. If you're saying... I, I, I guess I don't maybe help me understand that what how they're trying to correlate that if they are. Ken, did you want to add anything to that? I think this is the first time tonight. I agree with Ryan. I don't think I understand that either. Uh, <laughs> if I told you 10 different lies, would you still say I'm telling the truth? Well, yeah, they I would keep, say no. But... Yeah, I don't understand. They keep telling the lie of evolution over and over and over and people believe it. Hitler said they would. You keep telling the lie over and over. They'll believe it after a while. I mean, and you're telling the lie of creationism over and over, and some people believe it. Telling the lie of what? Creationism. Oh, Younger no. Creationism. That's the only logical right. conclusion. Nah. All right, here we go. Question from Born Again RN. Question for Ryan. If evolution has just changed, wouldn't asexual reproduction be more beneficial? In some cases, yeah, it absolutely is. Organism, there are organisms that are asexual. And in those cases, those particular types, kinds, species that evolved to that for that to be more beneficial are asexual. 
just like for us, it's mammals, I would say in general, it's beneficial to not be because that's how we evolved. Again, you, you, I think this is tying it back to they look at evolution as needing to move forward or needing to add something, needing to change to be better. And that's not what evolution is. It's just change. It's just a different you know, coding, different anything, different trait. It's just change. It evolves. That's what evolution means. Okay, Kent, over to you if you had anything to add. This is a wild belief. Uh, he believes it improves, though. It adds new information. We don't see that. And would an asexual, I can't read the word, something's wrong with your screen there. Uh, would what be more beneficial? Would an asexual reproduction? It'd be boring, but no, no, I'd go ahead. I'm done. Okay, I think, um, appreciate it, guys. What we'll do is one more question out of this huge pile of questions. Let me pick one. Then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, time has flown by, but we are um, going to wrap it up somewhere. So let's see. What question could I get to? There is a lot. Thank you so much for the questions. Uh, here we go. Final question. We'll make it for you, Kent. Cryptid Codex. Why aren't plants and animals found together in fossil beds? Why aren't plants... Well, the question is invalid. They are found together. Right. All kinds of things. There are fossil graveyards where there are bazillions of things tangled up together. I think if there was a flood that killed everything to make the fossils, the plants would tend to float at a different level than animals. They might be sorted a little bit based on body density. But as far as them being found in the same fossil graveyards, the question is invalid. They are. All right. Appreciate it. Ryan, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, let me add a little bit to that question, actually, because maybe they weren't meaning this, but it seems to me like why they because you say they're found together, but they're not. I mean, they're all over the world. There's different layers based on age, and that is without a doubt how it is. And if it was a giant flood, all of the layers should be mixed up and they're not. The majority are all in the same age groups or age ranges, if you will, to keep it as simple as possible. Um, there are certain examples, of course, if you cherry pick, like you like to say, what about the tree going up through them or whatever, localized floods, volcanic activity, but still in general, they're all found in different layers, depending on age, different types or kinds of plants and animals. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Kent, you get the last word. Well, I think Ryan's been trying to say here, uh, plants didn't, that they're different layers than animals because they lived at different times. Ryan. There are plants alive today and animals. I got them in my yard. Yeah. So what do you mean? Plants, plants and animals are still together today. Any sorting we see in the layers of the earth is much easier to explain with hydrologic sorting. Water automatically sorts things. Here, Ryan, I could send you one of these. Different color sand. If you tip it over, it'll make multiple layers in seconds. The flood made all the layers. There is no geologic column. I know that's your Bible and it hurts your feelings. It doesn't exist. There's no geologic column. The layers of the would contain different animals and plants a little bit based upon their body density. I bet clams are found in the same layer because clams have the same body density. Birds might be in a different layer because birds are lighter than clams, pound for pound or for cubic centimeter. So I think there's a body density problem. It's got nothing, or maybe habitat. Clams might be found at the bottom because they're already at the bottom when the flood starts. Birds might be found on top because they're the last ones to die in a flood. It's got nothing to do with evolution. And all the layers form when the water's moving sideways. You've got multiple layers at the same time. You need to watch my video number six about Noah's flood. To tell the kids the top layer's younger is to completely defy logic. Where's the top layer coming from? Outer space? Moving it from here to here doesn't change the age of it. You guys never answer the question. If I shuffle a deck of cards, is the top card younger? Shuffling the dirt around on the earth doesn't make one layer younger. You're not getting it. You don't want to get it. The Bible says scoffers who scoff at the flood are willingly ignorant. Second Peter 3. Write your name on that Bible, in your Bible by that one. Okay, thank you, Kent. Gentlemen, that concludes uh, the debate. We've made it to the end. Thank you so much for uh, the time you have both given to us, basically two hours. So thank you so much. Uh, quick final words, final thoughts. Brian, thank you so much for being willing to debate this topic and taking the evolution debate challenge. Uh, quick final word, final thought. Yeah, I uh, just want to say thank you again. And even though we are always going to disagree, I would definitely love to come back and 
talk to you more about this. Um, I guess just as a final thought, the layer thing again, it, they are different. I mean, they're <laughs> again, why, when you go down farther, does life get more primitive? Why are the single cell organisms on the very bottom layer? I mean, you're not, and it's not plants and animals living in different times. It's, different kinds of plants and animals living in different times. But anyway, thanks again. And I appreciate you moderator. Um, sorry, uh, Donnie, and appreciate you, Kent, for having me. All right. Thank you for those final thoughts, uh, Ryan. And again, yeah, we'd be happy to have you back for sure. Okay, Kent, thank you as well for doing this. Final words, final thoughts. I'd like to point out the obvious. There are single cell creatures alive today. They're still alive. Finding them in a different layer doesn't mean their age is all. God's not a man. The devil's a liar. God promised he would give you eternal life if you believe on him. Whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. I did that 53 years ago. I'm going to heaven. I'm a guilty sinner. I've broken God's laws. Ryan, simple question. If you die today, where would you go? You climb cell towers for a living. I hope you live to be 100. But I guarantee you're going to die one day. It's going to be a rock with your name on it. Then what? You think you sure? Are you sure? That's it. That's the end of it. If not, call me, 855-BIG-DINO, extension 3. I'll take your call. We can talk off the record. I'll explain it to you. That's it. Go ahead. Okay, Kent, Ryan, thanks for those final words, final thoughts. To the audience, thank you so much for being so engaged in this topic. Uh, you know, A ton of questions were sent in. Thank you so much for that. And Kent and Ryan, we're going to let you gentlemen get out of here and get some sleep. God bless. All right. Have a good night. In this book, you will find questions to answer such as, Is the rapture before or after the tribulation? Is there a significant difference between tribulation and wrath? What is preterism and is it biblical? Who is the he in Daniel 9.27? Is there an understandable chronology in the book of Revelation? Who are the elect in Matthew 24? Who is the he in 2 Thessalonians 2.7? Including much more, such as what is the great falling away and dual prophecy fulfillment? And of course, last but not least, the mark of the beast. I am back. I hope you enjoyed that trailer. Uh, forgive me if my voice is a little off today. I'm fighting a bit of a cold. Uh, the kids and wife got it. And then, of course, it was just a matter of time. But uh, you know what? This debate was worth it. This debate was fun. Definitely lively. Uh, one of the more lively ones. Uh, you know, it's good to see um, the chat tonight uh, having a good time and enjoying this uh, very engaging debate. So I'd personally like to see a round two between Ryan and Kent, and I'm sure um, a lot of people in the chat would as well. I have a feeling this one's going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of good feedback. And not only that, but we got uh, two hours of basically just um, nonstop engagement in terms of this debate. I mean, the timer, for me went off and we still ended up getting over an hour of discussion, lots of audience questions. 
and the debaters kept each other on their toes tonight. So if you love evolution debates and you're new to this channel, we just hit 11.4 thousand subscribers. So thank you so much. But if you are addicted to this topic as I am, please check the playlist titled the 2022 evolution debate challenge. I think we've now done about 45 of these um, this year. Overall, uh, in terms of debates on all sorts of topics, soteriology, the nature of God, evolution, um, what uh, eschatology, just a few that come to my mind, um, we've done now over 230. So you can find all of those listed in, um, in the playlist. So uh, real quick, I'll go over a couple announcements, and then I want to uh, go over this book, which is pinned in the um it's pinned in the comment section uh so thank you so much doki doki bible club uh this is the full color edition there are uh, quite a few charts in here and also uh custom images uh that look really really good with with the color um that i got done for the book and so um originally we just got a black and white version which is here but I noticed with all the visuals that, that I got professionally made, the cover was professionally made. I'm extremely happy with it. Basically what I had in mind, you know, this really, really apocalyptic kind of um, uh, cover. And then obviously the back as well. The person that I hired um, basically took my ideas and, and brought them to life. So I'm excited. It's comprehensive too. It's not just a little handbook or anything like that. It is, um, it's about 300 pages. So. Uh, the critics are going to have a lot of work to do, put it that way. Uh, but it, it's a lot to print the, um, it's a lot to print the full color. So that's why, you know, I think it is probably double the price. It's worth it with the charts. They look really good, but this is the black and white version, very affordable. Um, and you're going to get so much, uh, you're going to get a lot of content, which I kind of want to go over <clears throat> a little bit. So I'm excited for, for this. I think it's going to generate a lot of discussion. I did a formal debate on this topic just a couple of weeks ago. And you can see behind me, I've read endless books on this topic. And, you know, each book I agree with a lot. And then there's certain parts that I disagree with. And that's why I believe I've kind of put forth a model here in terms of eschatology that is the most consistent. And um, Richard Lee, good to see you. I know I got your email and you and I, I believe are going to discuss eschatology uh, coming up soon. So real quick, one more uh, evolution debate this, this week. We were supposed to have one tomorrow, but uh, Snake was right, needed to reschedule, got some uh, work things going on, travel, you know, life happens, right? Especially when the summer's over, um, rescheduling becomes a little more common which is completely fine. I never hold it against the debaters. So um, this one will be rescheduled, I believe for two or three weeks from now. With that being said, I talked to Jamie and he's done a lot of study on this specific topic, cladomonas, okay? Single cell to multi-cell evolution. So regardless of who you are in the evolutionary uh, world, if you want to debate this specific topic, it's been a uh, topic that is frequently discussed almost every evolution debate we do, but it's only discussed for a limited time. So we want to have really hyper-specific debates as well, which is why I've done personally quite a few on ERVs. And um, therefore, any evolutionist who's interested in debating this specific topic, single cell to multi-cell evolution, cladomonas, <coughs> please let me know, reach out and we can uh, set that up. I believe we're gonna be getting Luca Medugno. Um, it, what we'll probably do is have um, a debate on this topic with Jamie and an evolutionist. And then a week or two later, we'll, maybe we'll do the, the, the snake was right one, just so we don't have to wait too long, as I know a lot of us have been looking forward to this. So end of the month, we got Clash of the Titans, the epic showdown. A lot of people have wanted to see this debate. And so we made it happen. Round three, technically round two in the world of evolution. Mark Reed, Dr. Dino, is there reasonable evidence for biological evolution? So that is going to uh, take place this Friday. If you're not here for yesterday's debate in the Evolution Debate Challenge series, this one was a ton of fun. Um, 
very enjoyable discussion. A lot. I, I like the debates we've been doing lately. We're really focused on the discussion portion. So there's lots of back and forth and therefore thorough in, ter in terms of the topics discussed. So Jackson Rowe, Kent Hovind, did modern birds evolve from dinosaurs? Of course, uh, tonight, Ryan Adler versus Kent Hovind, definitely a lively one. And then later this week, Mark Reed and Ken Hovind. Next week, we've got the much anticipated debate. Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, taking on Matt Slick. Both seasoned debaters, highly knowledgeable. Definitely going to be one to remember. Same week, we've got Kelly Powers, Turretin fan. So, guys, it's main event after main event after main event. We're not playing around here on Standing for Truth Ministries. We love debates. We love critical thinking. And we want to give you... Epic debate after epic debate. So uh, then we're going to be having Eli Haytov and J.D. Uh, Martin. Um, this should be this weekend. Prayers for J.D. Martin. He's also um, a little bit under the weather. And so he's informed us uh, seven or eight days in advance. So we'll see. Hopefully he's feeling better for the debate. If not, we'll either um, get a replacement for Eli for that night. I know Eli is looking forward to debating and then just kind of push this one off maybe a few weeks from now, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll kind of play it by ear. Uh, and then first thing in November, we've got uh, Dr. Robertson Jenis, and we've also got uh, Steve Christie, who is just here. Uh, we did a show on the Marian Dogmas debate, getting a lot of, lots of good feedback. I believe it's already over a thousand views and a lot of uh, comments from people uh, pointing out how helpful it was. So it really was a comprehensive discussion on all things Catholicism, basically, it turned out to be. And so uh, here we go. Uh, this is happening. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be epic. This is going to be one to remember. This is going to be a debate you guys are going to want to share around. You're going to want to be here with your popcorn, your coffee, maybe not coffee and popcorn at the same time. That doesn't sound too good. But nonetheless, Steve Christie, Robertson Janice, the Marian Dogmas debate. It's happening. And uh, I got to say I'm pumped for it. We're also going to be doing a show next week with John Mackay and Joseph Hubbard, two of our uh, visiting geologists on this channel. You know, we're, we're really blessed when it comes to the world of geology and the flood because um, my uh, team geologist is Professor David McQueen. We got uh, George Bond who's doing a ton of work <clears throat> in that department. We have um, Joe Hubbard and uh, John Mackay, two geologists who are frequently here. Uh, we've had Mike Ord here six, seven times. Sal Giardina, we've had here a ton of times. He's a professional geologist as well. And so, um, you know, it, it's just a blessing because Matt and myself, you know, we really, really focus on biology and genetics. And so we've always wanted a team and uh, we've always wanted a good relationships with, with visiting experts, visiting scholars. And so it really is a good time to be a biblical creationist. We've basically got every field um, every field covered. So with that though, I just want to share a screen real quick and give people a bit of a sneak peek in terms of, um, what you'll find in this book. I just put this together. This is just a word document. This isn't the book itself, but this is some of the content you're going to find in the, um, in the book here, end times, end times revealed. So <clears throat> this book probably could have been 600 pages. So what I decided to do is cap it at 300 I know once you start going above 300, it gets a little bit um, intimidating. So I'm going to be doing part two, Wrath of God, okay? But um, a lot of the topics here you, you would have seen as well. I've done a series. I think I've done now 10 episodes in the series, um, which has a solid mix as well um, wh where you can find discussion on preterism. I did an open mic debate with a Dr. Kent Hoven. We had a good discussion. So anyways, here's a few things that you're going to find. You're going to find a good mix of basically uh, addressing what I believe are uh, false eschatological positions, which include partial preterism, full preterism, historicism, and of course, uh, pre-tribulation rapturism, okay? So you're gonna have a lot of visuals to go with this as well that I'll want people to. I put the visuals on the back here in, um, I've put them like this, so you can kind of turn it over and you've got the chart that you can follow along, especially on the chapter with the with the timeline. This is the black and white version, so you'll get a colored, uh, colored visuals in the uh, full color version, but um, you're gonna get a whole, section on Daniel's 70 weeks, 
debunking preterism, lots of examples of dual prophecy fulfillment, where <clears throat> basically when you point out to the preterist that, uh, you know, the in the Bible, we have dual, triple prophecy fulfillment, immediate applications and, and a more uh, dramatic application in the end times. But I've got a whole section just demonstrating from the Bible example after example after example of dual and triple uh, prophecy. I get a lot of questions that come in via email on um, uh, my timeline. So I got a whole section on that, very detailed. The He of Daniel 9, 27, this book puts that one to bed. It's not the Messiah, it's the Antichrist. And I address thoroughly all, all the uh, basically objections, arguments on that um, on that front there. Uh, you'll get the rapture in Revelation, detailed descriptions of, uh, you know, Revelation 7, Revelation 14 with uh, Jesus coming on a white cloud, the great multitude appearing in heaven that no man could number, <clears throat> the body and the eagles in Luke and Matthew that I believe a lot of people have erroneous understandings of. And so I got a whole section on that whole section on why Roman uh, revelation four, one is not the rapture. <laughs> one guy being caught up, you know, in spirit, not bodily, apparently representative of you know all believers of all time, the 24 elders. This is a section I'm really looking forward to uh, people seeing the 144,000. So uh, basically all pre-tribulation rapturists are wrong about the 144,000 and uh, surprisingly a lot of uh, post-tribulation rapturists as well. Post-tribulation pre-wrath, I should say, um, I believe are wrong on that. For example, um, I've got a couple books behind me. One that's been a blessing, uh, that Dr. Alan Kirshner's uh, books, but uh, I believe he's he's got a wrong view of the 144,000 as well as the he in... Um, second Thessalonians. So you're going to find, I think probably the most comprehensive breakdown you're going to find on the 144,000 in, in this section here. There are some standing here, of course, your, um, your preterists love that one, right? Got a whole section on there. And uh, the final chapter, I'm really excited to um, see everybody's thoughts of age of the antichrist. Uh, I've got a lot of discussion in this book, especially uh, in that chapter on the unholy trinity, right? The false trinity, the, the false prophet, the antichrist, the dragon, who is Satan. Um, I've also got a lot of discussion on the mark of the beast, the new world order, the one world religion. And so that's just kind of a sneak peek on what you guys are going to find. And uh, what I'll probably be doing is um, future open mic and panel discussions on that. Um, yes, DMM Destroyer, good to see you. Thanks for the new subscription. Uh, the book basically defends the post-tribulation uh, pre-wrath position, um, but also gets into a lot of the other positions and why I believe they're wrong. So just looking at the chat, see if there's any uh, last questions. Um, yeah, we did a um, open mic the other night because Professor David McQueen was supposed to uh, debate the good old King Crocoduck, popular revolutionist. A lot of people are pumped for that debate. I'm pumped for that debate. He had that classic trilogy uh, debate, that debate trilogy with, um, <laughs> with um, Ken Hoven a few years ago. Uh, I think probably going on five years now. Time really flies by. And so King Crocodile's back, and he's going to be debating um, Professor David McQueen, our team geologist. I'll be there to moderate. It'll be on Modern Day Debate. James Coons is doing a fantastic job with his channel. He's a really hard worker. And, um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed watching him uh, grow his channel. I've... Um, you know, J James is, is a good brother in the Lord. I've been on his channel <laughs> back when I first started. I was on his channel almost two, three times a week. All those debates, I think, uh, slightly burnt me out. So, uh, no, but seriously, those were fun. And so I'll be on Modern Day Debate, uh, co-moderating at least that, that debate. So because it was rescheduled to next Sunday, we did an open mic discussion. Um where skeptics, non-skeptics joined and engaged Professor uh, David McQueen on the age of the earth and the global flood. And we want to do more of those because um, I think that was, I think those were pretty epic. Uh, Dave H., don't worry. Don't worry. We got, uh, we got books for you as well. Uh, the Endogenous Retrovirus Handbook, Special Creation, uh, books for everybody. So with that being said, I think that's basically all that comes to mind. Thank you so much for tuning in to this debate. I thought this debate was pretty fun. It was entertaining, uh, maybe difficult to moderate at times because 
<laughs> when you get a debate like this that's slightly heated and not quite equally timed, it's more of like just a conversation, you're going to get a lot of different opinions in the chat. And so you're never going to be able to please everybody. You know, a lot of people, they like the more kind of free flowing conversation style where there's healthy interruptions. A lot of people don't like that. They like just the equally time discussion where it's two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. A lot of people like more formal debates where it's long openings, strict cross exam rebuttals. So, but you know what? I, I, I enjoyed the free flowing nature of this debate. So with that being said, everybody, hope you enjoyed the debate as much as me. Again, the uh, links for the new End Times Theology book is uh, is linked, is pinned in the chat. And so uh, don't forget to click those links and get yourself a copy you are not going to regret. So with that being said, God bless everybody. We'll see you this week for the next debate in the Evolution Debate Challenge series. Standing for Truth is out. God bless.